welcome back, fellow anime fans. Today, we continue our epic journey into the world of My Hero Academia and solo leveling. I am your host Kronos, back to read the highly anticipated What If Deku Had Solo Leveling System Part 3. In this installment, we will explore the thrilling battle training of Deku in Class 1A. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to witness some of the most intense battles ever. Chapter 13, First Day of Classes, First Test Izuku was the first one awake in the dorms. His sleep schedule was always messed up one way or another due to his quirk. He quickly gets dressed in shorts and a tank top before heading to the gym. He explored the campus a little during the weekend when he had time. He opens his daily quest and took a second to think about it. Wouldn't it be weird if I just disappeared in the middle of class one day? He sighs, rather not deal with the questions. He starts his workout. Music blares through his headset as the sun slowly rises, and people on campus wake up. The parents were officially kicked off campus Saturday night before you Udata put the defenses back up. Every student had cards encoded with their own numbers so they could get around or pay for lunch. It was an interesting system, and he heard Lunch Rush was in charge of the cafeteria. Hello, Midoriya Ida's voice comes from behind him as he was stretching for his run. He turns, seeing Ida in the same jumpsuit from the entrance exam. Good morning, Ida. Izuka waves. How far will you be running this morning? Ida stretches some. The sputtering of his engine somewhat ruined the morning essence but can't really blame him for his quirk. About 10 kilometers, more if I have time, Izuku explains. Well then, enjoy your run. Izuku watches Ida take off going the opposite way. He was thankful for that as he rather enjoyed his morning runs by himself. Izuku smirks as he passes Ida halfway through his run, so he turns around and chases the engine cork user down until they make it back to the dorms. They both were grinning at the quick race. You are a lot faster than you look, Midoriya, Ida opens the door as they walk in, seeing Katsuki already dressed in his uniform. Thanks, I'm surprised I could keep up. You and your brother are two of the fastest speed quirk users out there. Izuku takes off his shoes before waving at Katsuki. Already working out nerd? Katsuki sips his coffee. It's a daily thing, Katsuki. I rather not get penalized later. Izuku watches Ida walk upstairs. I'm going to shower. Don't drink all the coffee, please. I can do what I want. Katsuki yells, even if it was 7 a.m. in the morning. Rude, Izuku mutters and puts his shoes down once he enters his room before grabbing some boxers. Shower, cook for Ochako, or she will kill me. Izuku shivers as she tried a rope to his wrist and floated him till he promised to keep cooking for her yesterday. Demon girl. Izuku stands in the shower scrubbing his hair as he looks at his inventory, seeing different monster collectibles or dropped items. He remembered his mom trying to drug him and the message. If my quirk could keep me from being drugged or poisoned. Izuku quickly sees what he needs. He turns off the water and ties the towel around his waist. Item, Rasaka's Venom. Item class, A. Type, Potion. A pouch that contains Rasaka's purified venom. Obtained by defeating Rasaka. Unlikely drop rate. Drinking it will give you hardened skin but will weaken your strength. Effect Rasaka's Steel Scales. Minus 20% physical damage taken. Debuff weakened muscles, minus 35 strength. Izuku holds the pouch in his hand. If status effects are automatically healed, won't this debuff be removed as well? Izuku opens the bag and pouring a blue liquid into his mouth. There's no reason to think. Izuku stops and waits for the messages. A harmful substance has been detected in your body. 3, 2, 1. Cure poison has been completed. Izuku puts the pouch back into his inventory and smiles as he watches the message come up. Item, Rasaka's venom effect weakened muscles is fading. His stats stay the same, and he relaxes. It's just as I thought, wait, I can't get drunk now. Izuku hums before shrugging it off. He gets dressed in his uniform and gives up on his tie halfway through tying it, so he shoves it into his inner pocket. He could hear everyone moving around the dorms and felt their auras. The man-child was sleeping next to him, so he had to learn to ignore the lust aura Mineta had. I swear I will have one of the infantry knights kill him. Izuka thought while walking downstairs. The girls' uniforms were similar to the males except for the skirts. The dress code allowed for personal shoes instead of dress shoes or something like shikatsu. 
the college to the west. It was more of a military-type school that teaches heroes. They only had one pro in the top ten, which would be Hawks, who was nine as of now. He is definitely a quick-moving hero. Already 22 and projected to reach the top five in the coming months. Izuku sighs, feeling the energetic energy of Ochako coming down the stairs as he just finished their plates. As soon as she rounds the corner, he holds out her plate, and it was taken quickly. Thank you, she bounced away. He turns off the stove and cleans the pan he used before following with his own breakfast. The early risers were ready before other students. Ida was already out the door 15 minutes early. God the guy needs to learn to relax, many people thought while watching him rush out. Izuku walks with Ochako to class as she talks about the girls. Apparently, they had an impromptu sleepover. Hey, they kept asking about you. Izuku raises an eyebrow. Why? You're interesting, in your own way. Like the zero pointers, how we meet, she counts off on her fingers while she talks. You mean when you punched me in the face then floated me? Izuku smirks, knowing she hates when he brings it up. I already apologized for doing that. Why do you keep holding it over my head? Ochako pouts, because your punches hurt like hell, Izuku answers honestly. They came to the class door and looks up, that is a big door. Ochako states, I've seen bigger. Izuku opens the door for her. I need to go back to the demon dungeon when I have time. Izuku sighs. I'm going to need an entire week to go, though. Izuku walks in behind Ochako before feeling the lust aura festering. He finds the purple child sitting in front of Yayorozu. That's not good. She was distracted while trying to talk to Todoroki, so she didn't see the man-child's phone under the desk trying to get a photo. Izuku taps Katsuki on the shoulder. Move a seat back. We are putting the pervert in front to keep an eye on him, Izuku states in a soft voice. Katsuki turns around, seeing the dwarf and growls. Katsuki moves to Izuku's assigned seat as Izuku grabs the purple child by his collar, lifting him out of the chair with one hand. Taking the phone with his free hand, he throws the midget to Katsuki, who slams him into his old seat. Katsuki's palms were heating up as a warning. Hey! Give that back. Mineta yells and struggles, but Katsuki held him down. Stay seated unless you want me to blast you into grape juice. Katsuki growls Izuku went through his phone and internally gags so, so much porn. Izuku cleans out the phone of any photos that seem to be taken by the pervert before slamming the phone down on the desk. I will give you one warning, Mineta. If I or anyone catches you doing something like that again. I will hurt you Izuku warns in a low but dangerous voice as shadows seem to leak through his skin. Understand? The pervert quickly nods as Izuku takes the seat in front of Yayorozu. Good. Izuku wants to cut his hand off after touching the phone and then bleach his eyes. Well, that was interesting, a tired voice comes from the door. I won't question the switch in seats. The class fell silent, seeing a yellow sleeping bag at the door. Where did he? Izuku starts going through his head for information. Dark hair, scarf, dark jumpsuit. I know him, but who? It took eight seconds for you to quiet down. Izuku feels the faint aura around his teacher as the class watches him come out of the sleeping bag, tossing a juice pouch into the trash without looking. Time is a precious resource. You lot aren't very rational, are you? That struck a nerve in a few students. I am your professor, Shoda Aizawa. Pleased to meet you, everyone had one thought while looking at the hobo-looking teacher. He's our teacher, quickly, change into your gym clothes and head out to the training field. Aizawa holds out a UA gym jumpsuit. Every student quickly got up and left. Izuku and Katsuki could feel the eyes of their teacher on them. They both turned before leaving the door as their professor was looking at both. Izuku and Katsuki hardened their stares. We are going to be watched closely, they thought. Better hurry up. Aizawa talks in the same bored tone. The boys left the class glaring ahead with fists clenched. Once everyone was dressed, and outside, they saw Aizawa waiting for them. We will have a physical test, quirks aloud. What about the entrance ceremony? Or the guidance sessions? Ochako asks while standing next to Izuku. Izuku, on the other hand, smiles some. I can see how much my stats actually boost my physical strength. It could be useful information. Don't use any skills. 
Izuku mumbles to himself, Aizawa was still talking before calling Bakugo up. You got the most villain points. How far could you throw in high school? 80 meters, Katsuki answers before catching the softball thrown at him. Great, throw it with your quirk this time. Aizawa stands back. Don't leave the circle, give it all you've got. Awesome, Katsuki stretches out some. A bit of boom to this bitch. Katsuki steps back before pitching the ball. A second later. Die, the explosion that rockets the ball into the sky also dislodges the dirt around him. He smirks while clenching his hand. Die Katsuki, really? Izuka thought before remembering killing the Rasaka and Igris the first time. Never mind. I get it. Izuku looks towards Aizawa, who turns his phone for the class to see. 805.2M. It's important for us to know our limits. That's the first rational step to figuring out what kind of hero you'll be. Aizawa was interrupted by the cheers from the class. 805 meters? Seriously. Ashido blanches some. Jiro was covering her ears with tears in her eyes and glaring at the blonde. Should have given her a warning Izuku cringes softly. Whoa! This is awesome. Kurashima states with a grin, but it fell as well as the class's mood. Izuku's gaze falls on the dark aura he felt coming from Aizawa. Awesome, you say? Aizawa pushes his hair back some. You're hoping to become heroes after three years here, and you think it'll be all fun and games? The dead look in Aizawa's eyes freaks some students out, right? The one with the lowest score across all eight events will be judged hopeless and will be expelled. What? The class yells, besides a few. Izuku covers Ochako's mouth as she was about to say something stupid. Don't, he whispers. You know life's not fair, Ochako. That's why we are becoming heroes to make it fair. He warns her. She nods softly, neither of them noticing Aizawa saw and heard it. Uraraka. What were you about to say? Aizawa thought it would be necessary for the class to hear it as well. You um, nothing sensei. She looks away. It's important, so just say it. Aizawa glares. Yes, sir. I was going to say it's only the first day. It's unfair. She swallows softly. Okay, Madroya. Your turn. What did you say? Aizawa turns to the boy. Izuku crosses his arms as the class watches. I told her she already knew life wasn't fair, that's why we are at UA. We are becoming heroes to try to make it as fair as possible for civilians. Aizawa looks like he wants more of an explanation, so did the class. Fine, Izuku sighs. Natural disasters, accidents, and villains rampaging all over the world happen every day. Heroes are the ones who correct all that unfairness. We aren't going to have it easy if we choose to follow this path to be a hero. Izuku breaths out, correct, the world's never fair. So use your strength to overcome it all Aizawa turns around. The demonstration is over. Let's begin. Event 150 meter dash. Izuku pulls his current notebook out of his inventory and starts taking notes. Tenya Ida. Quirk, Engen. 3, seconds flat on a 50 meter dash. Not as fastest, Tsuyu Ajui. Quirk, Frog. 5.5 seconds on 50 meter dash, Ochako Uraraka. Quirk, Zero Gravity. 6.5 seconds, Yuga Aoyama. Annoying French Blonde from Exam. Quirk, Naval Laser. 5 seconds, Weakness firing his laser for too long will make his stomach explode. Look for openings between shots. Midoriya, Bakugo, you're up, Aizawa calls out. Both boys line up. Katsuki crosses his arms with palms open. Try not to blast me, Katsuki. Izuku digs his foot down into the dirt. Try not to get in the way then, Katsuki smirks. The boys glare at each other. Go! The robot calls out. Izuku dashes forward as Katsuki yells out his move. Two seconds. A few seconds later. 3.8 seconds. Izuku smirks, looking at the blonde. What was that, Katsuki? Don't get in the way? What? Katsuki growls but didn't attack. I didn't even use my sprint skill. Izuku walks back to the group as Katsuki stomps back. Aizawa stares at Izuku as he pulls his notebook back out. 
the kid was faster entering the testing site. Is he holding back? The rest of the students go before moving to the next test. Event 2, Grip Strength, Momoyairozu. Quirk, Creation. She created an industrial clam getting 700 kilograms. Mizo Shoji. Quirk, Dupli RMS. He used three arms to get 540 kilograms. Izuku finishes his entry before picking up his and squeezing the machine. A resounding crack made him stop. He looks down, seeing an error on the screen well, I mean I crush and destroy metal helmets in my free time. Izuku jokes. Sorry, Aizawa sensei. Aizawa stares at the broken machine before waving it off. It's fine he marks down the highest mark for the grip strength. The machine can handle most strength quirks. What the hell? Aizawa finishes marking the tests before moving to the next. The standing long jump was easy, Izuku, Aoyama, Katsuki, and Ochako clear the pit. By the time they got to the last event, Izuku was bored again, but he had the necessary information. The stats improved his body tenfold from high school. Taking first place in almost every event besides one or two, he tied or got second. Mineta has a useful quirk but needs to get his ass beaten into being a regular person instead of a pervert. Midoriya, your turn to do the ball throw. Izuku looks up from his notebook as Aizawa was looking at him. Wait, I have to go after Ochako? Izuku looks, overseeing her grin. That's so. Izuku stops himself with a sigh. What Izuku? Ochako giggles as he grabs the ball. Were you about to say unfair? She grins more. Yeah, Infinity Girl. What did you do this time? Thrown it into the sun? Izuku steps into the circle while rolling up his sleeve so he steps back. I threw a broken sword into the face of a giant, and I was around level 20. Izuku threw the ball, and the blowback was a lot more significant this time. The dirt kicks up around him, and he falls on his ass, staring as the ball disappears through a cloud. Okay, wow. Izuku slowly looks towards Aizawa, who is glaring at him with red eyes. Are you even taking this seriously? Aizawa's voice held a no-bullshit tone. Yes, I am, why? Izuku gets up and faces his teacher, because you haven't even broken a sweat all day. You're not out of breath, and you're not even using what I saw in the exam. Aizawa continues to scold him. My quirk is always on, Izuku explains. I said my quirk is like a video game character. I have stats I can increase. I have skills I can use. Like, skill, sprint activated. Izuku disappears from his spot in a blue blur before ending up right in Aizawa's face. In less than a second, Izuku covers 30 meters. Izuku's cold blue eyes were burning into glowing red eyes. Eraser head. You can't expect me to get fatigued by these little tests. I once ran from Mia Prefecture all the way to Mizutafu. In nine hours. I could probably do it again in a shorter time now. Izuku lets his skill go, so he would not waste mana and steps back. His eyes lose their glow while walking away. Also, it looks like you can't erase my quirk. That's good to know. Izuku ends next to Ochako, who side-eyes him. I thought you were kidding when you said you would run back home, she hisses softly. Wait you actually did that? Ashido and most of the class yells. Ah, uh, yes? I slept the entire day once I got home. Izuku answers offhandedly. Sato, the big muscle-bound guy, was holding his phone. That's... That's 373.4 kilometers from here. What the hell? Why did you go all the way to May Prefecture? Bakugo questions, clearly wanting answers, none of your business. Izuku crosses his arms, time for the results, Aizawa states pulling the class's attention back to him. He tilts his phone, showing a holographic list. Also, I was lying about expelling someone, the class would have glared at Aizawa if it weren't for his intimidating look, that was a rational deception meant to bring out the best in all of you. Aizawa starts smiling. Izuku shakes his head as some classmates yell. Aizawa watches Izuku, not sure what to do with the kid as of right now. Izuku was at the top of the list, where Mineta sits at the bottom. Katsuki was in fourth place and looks pissed. Anyway. We're done here. Your documents about the curriculum are in the classroom. Take a look when you get changed Aizawa walks away, leaving the class to its devices. Chapter 14, 
battle training, the following day was as typical as being taught by pro heroes could be. English was taught by Mike. It still amazes Azuku that Mike holds and maintains three jobs. He was a radio show host that he does on top of being a hero and teacher. Cementos was modern literature, ectoplasm was a math teacher and midnight. Good Lord Azuku looks at her hero costume, the contemporary hero art history teacher, at least she could grab people's attention, the last class of the day was the hero basics class. Many people were trying to guess the next hero to walk through those doors. Izuku already knew and to be honest, Izuku rather skips out on the whole class, that All Might would be teaching, but he hasn't recognized him yet. He saw Jiro perk up first before feeling the heavy steps coming to the door, I have. A big blonde in All Might's Silver Age costume throws the door open coming inside like an idiot. Come through the door, like normal, All Might walks to the center of the room as the excitement in the classroom reaches a new peak, it's All Might. He's really teaching us, that's his Silver Age costume. Izuku, on the other hand, stares at seven figures hanging off the blonde's shoulder, smiling down at the class. Izuku's eyes widen and grips his desk. They weren't screaming but seemed to be at peace. What the hell? Izuku tears his eyes away from all might when the wall opens, filled with cases with numbers on them. Izuku glances back at all might, seeing the shadows gone. Is my head messing with me? Izuku asks himself as he snatches his case and goes to get changed. His hero costume has lightweight armor and comfortable shoes. He pulls on the jacket he had made, it added the extra armor, then his black combat pants with extra pockets that carry small med kits, he had the items he could equip as well. He put on the same things he used after killing Idris as they added to his stats, the soft blue hue shows up once he equips the extra armor before heading out with the guys who were already dressed. Katsuki looks like a walking bomb that fits his quirk. Those gauntlets, though, needs a revision. Too bulky and got in the way if he ever needed to reach into a small area. Izuku almost has an aneurysm when he saw the girls' costumes. I have no words, his eyes analyzes every outfit carefully picking them apart, good and bad. He ignores All Might as he talks. Yayorosu's costume gave little to no protection and left nothing to the imagination. Izuku threw his hood up so people couldn't follow his eyesight as All Might explains the exercise. Izuku looks at Yuraraka. At least she has eye protection. Izuku sighs. Ah, Izuku. I like the jacket, it's a lot better than your hoodies. Ochako smiles and blushes lightly. I wish I was more specific on my request form. Izuku looks down her skin tight bodysuit. At least someone can't easily grab your costume, also, what's wrong with my hoodies? Izuku rolls his neck, trying not to stare anymore. Nothing, but you do look like a delinquent sometimes. The jacket makes you look more professional, I guess. Ochako explains quickly. Izuku holds his heart, acting hurt before overhearing Mineta. Being in the hero course is the best. Mineta looks like he was in a diaper. The man-child was staring at the girls with a creepy grin on his face. I'll kill him, Izuku thinks while glaring. Maybe I can drag him into a dungeon. All Might pulls out a script as he continues to explain the situation. The heroes have a limited amount of time to either capture the villains or secure the weapon. The villains must protect the weapon until the time is up. How do we proceed to divide ourselves into teams? A knight asks, must be Ida Izuku smiles. It definitely adds protection, but his shoulders and neck are open for attack. I could easily slip a blade between the gaps, drawing lots. All Might grins, is that really the best way? Ida asks. Pros often have to team up with heroes from other agencies on the spot during emergencies, All Might explains. Wow, he might be a good teacher, eventually, Izuku jokes to himself. I see. I apologize for getting ahead of myself. My mistake. Ida bows. Soon the teams were split up, and Izuku thanks whatever god there was he got Ochako. Thank god, Izuku states as he walking over to Ochako. Let's do this. She pumps her fist into the air. Moving on, first up are Team A is heroes, Team D is villains. All Might holds up two different balls with the letters on them. Izuku looks over, seeing Ida and Katsuki step forwards. Never mind God, I take it back. Go screw yourself, the villain team goes in first. The timer starts in five minutes when the hero team sneaks in. 
the rest of us will watch via CCTV. All Might walks over to the teams. Ida, Bakugo, you boys need to adopt a villain mindset. This is a practical experience, so go all out. Don't hold back. I will stop you if you take things too far. Good luck. All Might quickly leaves with the class as Ida and Bakugo go inside the building. What do you know about the nerd's quirk? Katsuki questions Ida, who is checking out the fake bomb. He used a shadow to kill the zero pointer. I did not get a good look at what it was. I just know he has enormous strength. I ask you not to charge straight at Midoriya. Ida advises sternly the longer we wait, the more time he can plan. I will hunt the nerd down so he can't create some crazy plan to win, just watch out for Angel Face. Katsuki stomps off, not waiting for a response, outside with the hero team. So, what do you want to do? Izuku asks his teammate, Um, well, there is no pressure for failure, but I don't want to lose to them. I can get us to the third floor with my quirk, but I don't really have much. Ochako answers slowly, What are there, quirks? Izuku continues to question, already knowing the answer but wants her to come up with a plan. He could probably end it quickly by scaling the building, but this was a team exercise. Well, Ida has engines in his legs, so he's fast, and Bakugo seems like an angry bomb. Right, Katsuki is really strong. He is great at anything he picks up and has a mind for battle. He will be looking for me since we have a lot of history. Ida, on the other hand, comes from a hero family, so he's been raised for heroics since he got his quirk. He probably already figured out a way to stop you from getting items to use with your quirk. The boy stretches out, getting ready for the start. So, you're saying, you want to go after Bakugo? She raises an eyebrow. Yep, but he will be coming to us. When he inevitably tries to blow my head off my shoulders, grab some rubble and take it with you before going after Ida. Stay quiet and treat this like a real situation, Izuku advises. Ochako nods. Indoor antipersonnel battle training. Start. All Might calls from the speakers in the building. Ochako taps Izuku's back and then hers as they kick off the floor, getting to the third story building. Izuku manifests one of his blades and breaks the latch on the window. He slides it open, letting Ochako go in first. Oh, when we get back, we are fixing your boots, Izuku smiles. What's wrong with my boots? Ochako hisses softly. You are wearing heels, are you serious? Izuku shot back and watches her glare. Midnight wears heels. She stays close to the wall, and so does Izuku, because she is a mid-range fighter. You are a close-range fighter. You will snap an ankle if you fight in heels, Izuku informs but pushes Ochako back before tilting his head. Bakugo's hand explodes next to it as he destroys the wall. See what I was saying? Izuku didn't mind Bakugo as his palm strikes the blonde in the chest, sending down the hallway. Get the rubble and go. His eyes are on me. Izuku moves away from Ochako as she snags a few rocks and runs off. Nice dodging, Deku. Izuku rolls his eyes at that. I didn't even really dodge Kakin. Well, come on, puppy. Let's fight. Izuku raises his hands, keeping his hands open and ready. Katsuki rushes forward and throws the usual right punch. Izuku notices the window behind him. So, he does the rational thing. Izuku steps into the punch, grabbing Katsuki's gauntlet and under his armpit. Izuku pivots and throwing the blonde through the window, out into the street. Izuku hears the pops from Bakugo explosions before he peeks outside, seeing Katsuki on the road. Stop throwing the same stupid right haymaker idiot. Fuck you. Katsuki screeches from below. Izuku could see Katsuki was bleeding from the glass. Ochako, Katsuki is outside right now. It will take a few minutes to get back upstairs. Where are you? Izuku speaks calmly into earpiece All Might gave them. I found Ida. She almost starts giggling. He's doing an amazing impression of a villain, fifth floor. Right in the center. Are there windows into the room? And do you think you could get the weapon without my help? Izuku keeps talking while walking towards a different window. Um, west side. He's facing them right now, so if you are thinking of entering that way, I would have to be the distraction. Ochako informs quietly. Izuku could feel the rage from under him. Guess Katsuki hasn't figured out prolonged flight yet. Um, try to get the bomb if not then keep Ida distracted, but don't rush him. 
I'll be the backup plan if anything. You got this, Ochako. Izuku threw the window open before poking his head out, looking up. Two floors, Izuku saw the windows she was talking about and manifests his blades. He stabs the dagger into the concrete and cringes softly. I really hope this doesn't ruin the blades. Izuku starts climbing before reaching the fifth floor and investigates the room. Yuriko was floating above Ida's view, but he was about to look up, so Izuku did what he needs to do. He knocks on the window. Hey, Ida. Help. Izuku cries out in faux panic. I, I am scared of heights. Emito area. What are you doing? Ida rushes over as Ochako drops onto the bomb, grabbing it just as Ida opens the window for Izuku to crawl in. Heroes win. All Might yells, making Ida whips around, seeing Ochako hugging the bomb like a koala bear. Pfffff she falls off laughing. I Izuku, why you looked ridiculous, popping up like that from outside. She giggles on the floor as Izuku pushes off his hood. Ida just looks completely lost at what happened. W when did you get in here, Yuraraka? When you were distracted with your acting skills, she admits. By the way, A for improve. She threw him thumbs up. Izuku rolls his eyes before Bakugo stormed in. You read my moves then threw me out the fucking window. Katsuki yells while palms popping with explosions. Language Bakugo and Midoriya, that's not heroic to throw someone out of a window. Ida starts to chastise both of them, but Izuku ignores the robot. I watched you my entire life Katsuki, you always start off with your right. Fix it before it gets you killed Izuku stands up before looking out the window seeing the broken concrete. Note to self, check daggers later, please come back to the observation deck to review. All Might calls through the speakers. The walks back into the observation room as Katsuki was picking glass out of his hair, still growling to himself. Good job, heroes now who can tell me what went right and wrong with the villain team. All Might asks the group that was watching. Ida did well to prepare for Yurarika by removing the items inside the room but didn't pay close enough attention and got distracted. From what I saw, Bakugo's every action was motivated by a personal grudge. Momo starts only to get cut off. That's kinda wrong, Izuku speaks up. About the Bakugo thing. He quickly clarifies. We have history, but that isn't important right now. Katsuki want to explain? Katsuki huffs out and throws more glass into the trash. The nerd watches everything. Did any of you see him writing in a notebook yesterday? Most of the class nods. He's watching you in your quirk. That got the class to freeze up some. He's a nerd when it comes to quirks and how to use them. He is the one that came up with using my explosions for flight. If you give him too much time to plan, you won't be giving a chance to win. Katsuki bites back a growl. Anyways, continue Yairozu. Sorry, I interrupted. Izuka waves some. He wants her to continue since she makes good points about Ida. Oh of course, Yairozu seems to shrink into herself some. Um, Yurariko was able to stay quiet and use her quirk to stay above Ida's field of view, which was a strategic move. She was only saved by Midoriya. I'm sorry, how did you climb the outside of the building? No cameras were watching the outside. She turns to Izuku, who pulls his dagger out of his jacket pocket. With this. The blue blade was still in pristine condition, which Izuku felt relieved that he didn't cause permanent damage. Where did you even get that? Kiminari asks while stepping away from Izuku. Mineta was hiding behind Shoji. Magic, Izuku let the blade go, and it vanishes. Anyways, please continue. I enjoy your analysis Yairozu. Izuku leans against the wall. Well, even if you didn't use your quirk or very little of it. You read Bakugo's movement before putting him away from the battle while keeping the building's stability intact and being a distraction when your Arca was about to be found out. The heroes acted like a team while the villains failed. Yairosa finishes, and All Might's jaw was slightly open. I was not expecting her to say that much. All Might quickly pulls himself together as the class was looking at him. Correct. Now, who was the MVP of the match? A few students look between the hero team since they really didn't know who should get it. Yurarika, Izuku states. She kept a cool head and did most of the work. Without her, we wouldn't have found the bomb or even captured it. Good job Midoriya. Now on to the next match. 
All Might pulls out another pair of balls, and the teams left to a different building, Shoji and Todoroki versus Ojiro and Hagakure. I really hope she isn't naked, Izuku mumbles as Ochako stands next to him. Why? Ochako questions, knowing that she was but didn't say anything to embarrass her new friend. Todoroki isn't a team player. He's going to freeze the building, and she's going to get cold very quickly. Izuku saw Yayorozu nodding at his statement, what do you think they should do to get out of the situation Yayorozu? The tall girl turns to him, slightly surprised, he asks, HM, between the both of them. The only way to get away from Todoroki's ice would be to use each other. Have Ojiro hold Hagakure up until he stops his attack, using her shoes as a distraction before ambushing him. She offers. Also, call me Momo. It's much easier than my last name. Call me Azuka then, and I agree. Todoroki is strong but once again, this is a team exercise meant to teach not to show off. Izuku frowns as the entire building was encased in ice trapping both villains. Shoji stands outside with his arms crossed and body language, saying he was pissed, but he ate it well. Some people inside the observation room were shivering. Todoroki tags the bomb after saying something to the villains, then everything melts when he raises his left side. Dual quirk. And Aizawa got on my ass for slacking off. Izuku glares at the screen. The teams came back, and the MVP was Todoroki. I would have given it to Shoji for having to deal with the asshole. Izuku whispers just low enough for Shoji to smile under his mask and Jiro to snicker. Momo and Izuku sat back while watching each match. They went back and forth with an analysis of what each team should have done to win. It was honestly fun for both to have someone they could relate to their skills. Soon enough, it was Momo's turn, and Izuku knows that her team would win. Even if she was stuck with the pervert, Izuku made sure to manifest his blade while showing it off for Mineta before leaving. Every match was complete Izuku saw blood running down All Might's chin and remembers the injury. He's going to have to leave soon. Excuse me, All Might Izuku holds up a white cloth. You have some blood on your chin, Izuku whispers softly. All Might shoots him a thankful look before cleaning his chin. Well done, everyone. No serious injuries. But please, if you are hurt, go get checked out by recovery, girl. That means you, Bakugo. I know you are still bleeding from your match. All Might stands proudly in front of the class. Change out of those costumes and head back to the classroom. All Might speeds off down the hall, and Izuku shook his head. Not bad for a first exercise, even if we should have started with the basics, but his class not mine. Izuku stretches out while walking back to the locker rooms. Kurashima forces Bakugo to go to Recovery Girl to make sure he gets healed. Everyone gets to the classroom, talking about the matches. When Aizawa comes in, he ends the class early in telling them to go back to the dorms, so they don't disrupt other classes. Izuku goes back to his room and pulls his daggers out, checking them more thoroughly for damage now that he was alone. Once he was satisfied, he places them back into his inventory. His school jacket hangs off the back of the chair and pulls out the homework they got. Yo, nerd, Katsuki calls from the door. It's open, Katsuki. Izuku places his pencil down, turning towards the door as Katsuki walks and dressed in shorts and a tank top. What do you need? I lost to you, and as if that weren't enough, that icy bastard and ponytail girl. I can't measure up to them just yet, but just you wait. From here on, I'm going to beat you all. Katsuki storms out of the room, slamming the door. I wish you luck, Katsuki. Izuku smiles before spinning around. But I'm getting stronger too. On Izuku's morning run, he sees the front gate slowly get more populated by the news. Did they already find out All Might is teaching? Izuku shakes his head before heading back to the dorms. He advises everyone not to leave campus unless they want to get mauled by news teams and reporters. Everyone enters the back of the school, away from the gates, so the reporters didn't catch them. Aizawa strolls into class, looking devoid of sleep. Underground hero by night, a teacher by day. What a man. Izuku chuckles. Good work with yesterday's battle training, Aizawa places a stack of evaluations down on the podium. I looked over your grades and evaluations. Bakugo, Katsuki perks up slightly from his usual slumped position. Next time, try to work with your teammate. You're in UA now grow up. You got talent, kid. Aizawa waits for a response. 
Got it. Katsuki slumps back. Midoriya, Yayorozu. All Might stated you both gave good analyses of your classmates. Keep working on those skills, they are important when working as a hero, the two called out nod in understanding, Todoroki, it was a team exercise. Sure, your approach to the issue would have worked in an abandoned building with only villains inside it, but what about if it was a hostage situation, remember, sometimes you have to work with someone else to get the job done. Aizawa sighs as Todoroki just nods as well. Now, on to homeroom business. You'll be picking a class president. I don't care how or who just get it done before English. Aizawa finds his sleeping back and gets into it. Once he was in his sleeping bag, the class stays calm. Yeah right, the class explodes with people scrambling for the position. Luckily Ida collects everyone. Quiet down, everyone. Leading the many is a task of heavy responsibilities. Still, ambition does not equate to ability Ida stands up proudly at his desk. The sacred office demands the trust of its constituents, if this is to be a democracy, then I put forward the motion he raises his hand the highest. That our leader must be chosen by election, but Ida, we haven't known each other enough to build any trust. Ajui taps her chin softly, and everyone will vote for themselves. Kirishima waves his hands around, we have spent about four days together. Inside a dorm and we watched slash fought each other the other day, Izuku speaks up. I think depending on who earns multiple votes would be suited for the office. If they don't think they can handle the paperwork, Izuku watches a few students realize being the president wasn't all fun and games. They can bow out and hand it over, precisely, Midoriya. Sensei, would you allow this? Ida asks the caterpillar in the corner who just cracks his eyes open enough. Like I said, I don't care. Just get it done, Aizawa closes his eyes, and everyone quickly shuts up. Yes, sensei. Ida was the only brave one. The votes were counted, and Izuku sighs. Do I have enough time to do this? Also, what the hell? Who voted for the shitty nerd? Katsuki stands up and yells. Izuku and Momo were chosen. Fine, so your president's Midoriya and vice president is Yayorozu. They stand in front of the class. Izuku feels slightly bad for Ida as he had his head down. It will be fun working with you, Momo. Izuku holds out his hand. Same to you, Izuku she smiles and shakes his hand. Lunch. Izuku was joined by Ochako, Ida, Momo, and Jiro. The rest of the A1 was spread out. So many people, Izuku groans wishing he could put in his music, but it would have been rude to the people at his table. Besides the hero course, there are also students from support and business course. We all come here for lunch. Ida informs while eating. This rice is so good, Ochako munches on her food while Izuku was already running through the different responsibilities of his new position. I don't know if I will have time, Izuku mumbles softly while eating his lunch. You can do it, Izuku. Ochako smiles across from him. Plus, you do have Yayorozu, you can rely on. Ida points to said girl who nods. I will help in any way. Momo picks at her food. Thank you for trusting me. I just never got voted for much in high school or anything, really. Izuku sighs. Didn't you want to be president too, Ida? Ochako turns to him, having some rice on her lip before cleaning it off. Again, ambition and suitability are different matters, Ida states firmly, but Izuku just laughs. Ida, honestly, you probably have more experience for the presidency than I do. So it's not suitability, that is the problem. Izuku finishes his meal first but didn't get up to leave. I guess I can see your point, but your grit, intelligence, and analyzing skills will help our class in multiple ways. That also goes without saying you and Yayorozu will be a powerhouse in the office, Ida concludes. Yeah, I mean, you did get second overall in the written exams, Ochako blurts out. Izuku just glares at her, not wanting that to be known. Oh, Momo got first, Jiro states offhandedly. The two presidents just nod to each other, but their eyes hint at a challenge. Midterms will be different, Izuku states. No, they won't, Momo shot back. Izuku was broken out of his heated staring contest with Momo by a chill going down his back. Momo, can I trust you to take care of people here? I need to go check on something. Izuku got up quickly, taking his plates without waiting for a response. What does he mean by that? 
Ochako asks before jumping as an alarm deafens anyone inside. Security level 3 has been broken. All students please evacuate in an orderly fashion. The speakers ring out. What's security level 3? Ida asks a third-year student running by the table. It means someone's infiltrated the building. Hasn't happened in my three years. The third year kept running. Anyway, hurry up and get out of here. People are panicking, Momo states, keeping a hold on the table while watching people bottleneck the exits. Did Azuku know this was going to happen? She quickly made a microphone as Ida checks the outside. Azuku runs towards the decaying aura he feels near the teacher's lounge. He throws the door open, finding a figure going through a desk. Who are you? Izuku manifests Rasaka's blade, ready to fight. Oh? An NPC has found me. The figure tucks some paper into his hoodie jacket. Or are you more than an NPC? Get away from the desk and drop whatever you took. Izuku steps forward, watching the target. See you soon. The man got enveloped with a purple cloud before vanishing. Izuku feels the aura disappear with the man, and he puts his dagger away. That's not good. Chapter 15, Lost Trust and Gained Shadow, Izuku was pissed. He was sitting on the bus with his hood up. His gut, screaming at him to get ready for a fight. Ochako couldn't get him to relax ever since he got back to the dorms, he informed Aizawa and Nizu. They both brushed him off, saying they would investigate, but they didn't look worried. The rat was smiling like it was any other day, guess all teachers are the same, can't trust them. Izuku could see the dome to the USJ as they get closer. Why does it feel like I'm walking into a trap? The guy said, see you soon. If I was a villain and going to attack UA, I would have done the exact same thing he did. Cause a distraction steal info, but who attacks a day after it happens? Does he already have troops ready? Izuku gives up worrying and just gets ready to fight. Whatever happens is on their heads for not listening. Izuku, are you okay? Ochako pokes his side some. No. I'm not. Izuku turns his eye towards his teacher, who was pretending to sleep. Yeah figured out you were a sensei. I know you're faking. Before Ochako could ask what's wrong, the bus pulls up to the front of the USJ. Aizawa got up. We're here. Look sharp, now. Aizawa glances at Izuku, who keeps his head up and head down but the cold blue from his eyes was seeping out of the shadows the hood creates. Kid, we didn't dismiss what you told us. Don't take it the wrong way. Aizawa signs internally, we just didn't want to cause panic. Izuku steps off the bus while standing at the back of the class when they enter the dome. Thirteen was there like Aizawa stated earlier. All Might was missing. Izuku watches Thirteen holds up three fingers. He ran out of time? Seriously? Ochako was currently fanderling over the rescue hero. The rescue hero begins their speech about how the class was going to learn how to save lives with their quirks. Izuku honestly couldn't pay attention as he feels uncomfortable in this situation. They were miles away from the school, with no backup if something happens. Thirteen had a strong quirk, but they don't use it against humans since they can rip someone apart. Plus, they were a rescue hero, not a fighter. Aizawa was an ambush-type fighter. He could take on groups, but he couldn't keep it up for long. The lights flicker in the dome. Izuku looks up, seeing the same purple mist from the day before, opening in the middle of the dome near a fountain. Izuku watches a hand come out, then another hand covering a villain's face. Him, he's the same guy. The same decayed aura. Izuku starts to get closer to the edge, only paying attention to the villains as they pour out of the warp. He couldn't keep track as multiple villains come out, but his eyes stay on the main three that hold a powerful aura around them. What the heck's that? More battle robots? Like during the entrance exam? Kirishima asks while peering over Aizawa's shoulder some. Don't move. Those are villains. Aizawa already put on his goggles ready to jump into the fray. Thirteen, an eraser head, is it? The mist speaks. According to the staff schedule, we stole the other day. All Might is supposed to be here, of course. That whole incident was this scum's doing. Aizawa growls. Izuku just glares at his teacher, where is he? A dry and voice that would make people cringe came from the handy guy. We've come all this way and brought so many playmates. All Might, 
the symbol of peace, is he here? The hand villain sways in his spot, giving off creepy vibes. Izuku feels a spike of killing intent. Don't say it, please don't dash. I wonder if some dead brats will bring him here. Izuku finally gets a quest after weeks of just daily quests. Quest directions. An emergency quest has activated. There are players who have killing intent towards you in the area. Slay them or push them back to ensure your safety. If this quest is not completed, there will be a penalty. Numbers of players to kill slash push back, 68. Numbers of players killed slash retreated, 0. At least it's allowing me to push them back instead of just straight up killing them. Maybe I can talk them out of it. Izuku looks around, seeing most of his classmates looking fearful. Katsuki looks like he was going to do something stupid if given a chance. Fuck it. Excuse me. Izuku yells, raising his hand. Can we talk this out really quick? All Might's not here right now, so we have some time, right? Izuku continues as he pulls back his hood, some letting the villain see his face. I mean, we did meet yesterday, but we didn't get to talk that much. Oh, you're that NPC from the teacher's lounge. The villain scratches his neck as other villains wait for an order. Izuku could see the bird brain villain next to the mist didn't move a muscle since walking through the warp. That thing is not normal. Izuku notes quickly, what are you doing? Aizawa grabs Izuku's shoulder, but since the teacher didn't listen to him yesterday. Izuku returns the favor, he shrugs off Aizawa's hand and walks down the stairs, only making it halfway before stopping. You like video games, right? Izuku smiles politely while keeping his hands behind his back as he materializes his night killer dagger. You keep calling me an NPC, so let's have some dialogue. How do you plan on killing the almighty symbol of peace? Maybe we can test it out first? Izuku was ready to call Igris out if needed. Igris could kill All Might easily, so whatever they got. He can handle it, can't we just shoot this stupid kid and get this started? One smaller time villain asks. Shut it, the hand villain growls. His attention to the NPC he met earlier. What's your name NPC, Izuku? Yours? Izuku feels the shadows crawling under his jacket, rearing to go. Shigaraki, Shigaraki introduces himself to Izuku while staring through the fingers of his hand mask. Well, Shigaraki, how do you plan to defeat the symbol of peace? No offense, these small-time thugs you gathered wouldn't even get a hit on him. Izuku spins the dagger between his fingers to keep his hands occupied while trying to dig for information. Get them out of here, 13. Quickly and quietly. Aizawa hisses as Izuku distracts the villains. I'll get Midoriya. The rescue hero nods gently and starts backing the class to the doors. Katsuki wants to argue but bites his tongue along with Ochako as the class slips towards the doors unnoticed, with the anti-symbol of peace. The bioengineered Nomu. Shigarasaki motions to the bird brain next to him like it was the best gift he was ever given. He's stronger and faster than all might, so what's with the small flies? Izuku motions to the low-level villains with his dagger-free hand. They are to keep your class busy and out of the way. Or kill them if they want. Shigaraki offhandedly motions while starting to look back up the stairs to the class that was halfway out the door. How about a duel? 1v1? Izuku asks, bringing the attention back onto him. Shigaraki laughs manically. You verse my nomu? Are you suicidal? Shigaraki keeps laughing. Oh, no. Kinda like you, I have my own personal guard. Izuku smiles while he pulling his head back over his head before his eyes light up a dark blue. You're Noma versus Igris. The villains watch as a shadow grows behind Izuku. The black sword was being held with the tip of the sword in the concrete steps. Igris's one hand cups the top of the handle with the second near the hilt of his sword. Igris was in a relaxed state as he waits for an order from his monarch. Igris and the Nomu were the same sizes. The Nomu looks like a bodybuilder where Igris was agile and had his own mind when it came to fighting, unlike the brain-dead puppet. So what do you say? One versus one. No interference, just us. Send your little goons back to whatever rock you pulled them from. Izuku shrugs because of either way. It would become a one versus one. He didn't care how it happened just that it did. Hey! A villain yells. You brat! Others scream, who the hell does this kid think he is? More villains start shouting and closing in towards the stairs. 
or we can go to war, either way, you will have to face him before all might. Izuku jabs his thumb back at Igris. War? Ha, ah, you and what army brat? A smug villain with multiple arms asks cockily, getting to the base of the stairs. Izuku turns around, peeking past Igris seeing only Aizawa at the top. His teacher looks pissed and slightly worried. Izuku turns back around, smiling. My army, come out. Shadows explode from under Izuku's jacket before going up the steps. One by one, the Shadow Knights stand up with magicians at the top of the stairs in front of Aizawa. You guys know it's your first mission, right? Izuku talks to his shadows not to Igris. The villains back away from the stairs, slowly. Shigaraki watches in fascination. You're a true necromancer, aren't you? Why not join my team? You could be useful. Shigaraki grins under his mask. Sorry, Shigaraki, but time's up. Izuku smiles sadly. You never gave me an answer to the one versus one. Plus, I don't like bullies. Go, Izuku's army charges forward, but Igris stays behind Izuku, ready to protect him. Shigaraki and Aizawa watch the battlefield in horror as the Shadow Knights do not hold back. The small-time villains were cut down one after another, leaving a vast land of bodies. The USJ Central Plaza was their final act of villainy. Izuku, Aizawa, Shigaraki, the Mist Villain, and the Nomu were the last living things in the USJ. It only took eight minutes for quiet to fall onto the remaining people. Aizawa had to swallow some vomit that was climbing up his throat as Izuku looked indifferent to the massacre. As I said, the small flies couldn't even take down one of my knights. The knights were making their way back to Izuku only to stop at the base of the stairs making a barrier. So does your Nomu want to try? Shigaraki scratches his neck till it was raw. I wasn't expecting someone so strong. You are a mini-boss, and if the Nomu can kill you, surely he can kill All Might. Nomu, the Nomu screeches before rushing forwards only to be met in the center of the field by Idris. Who cut the Nomu's head off in one swing? Ha, ah, that almost happened to me a few months ago. Wait, why doesn't he look worried? Shigaraki was just standing there as he saw the Nomu get up and reattaches its head. Regeneration quirk? But he has incredible speed and strength. Izuku calls out the differences. He's got shock absorption, but since your great shadow knight has a sword, it's useless. Good thing that's not the only quirk Nomu has. Shigaraki laughs. Shigaraki, we shouldn't tell the man anymore. His classmates have already escaped while distracting us. He holds the high ground. We should retreat, the mist speaks softly, but in all the silence, Izuku heard it clearly. Igris was standing with his sword at the ready. The Nomu hasn't moved yet either, shut up, Kurojiri. The Nomu's hyper-regeneration did its job. Shigaraki points out to the Nomu, multiple quirks. I knew that thing wasn't normal. Izuku frowns while looking at his mana. Magicians, light the monster up. The Nomu suddenly gets hit with three giant fireballs that burn its flesh. Igris, make sure he doesn't get up again. Igris finds new speed and slices the Nomu in its ligaments so it couldn't get up as he attacks relentlessly, not giving the Nomu time to regenerate. Izuku watches as Igris had the monster on its knees before shoving the sword through its brain and down its spine, pinning it to the floor. Igris holds the blade down, making sure the Nomu couldn't heal again. Magicians again, Izuku watches the Nomu, and Igris get blasted with high-leveled firepower. While the screeching from the Nomu falls silent, Igris was utterly untouched by the magician's fire attack. MP, 1700-1860, Izuku finally notices that Kurojiri disappeared with Shigaraki halfway through the final firestorm. Quest directions, an emergency quest has activated. There are players who have killing intent towards you in the area. Slay them or push them back to ensure your safety. If this quest is not completed, there will be a penalty. Numbers of players to kill slash push back, zero. Numbers of players killed, 66. Number of players retreated, two. Quest complete. You have completed. Emergency quest. Quest rewards. Reward number one, stat points. Eight. Will you accept your rewards? Accept refuse. Izuku makes sure the magicians blocked Aizawa's view as he made his way over to Igris. He could see the shadows seeping from the charred body of the Nomu. He looks up at Nomu and sighs sadly, you will be much more useful on my side. 
Izuku holds out his hand. Our eyes the shadows seep out of the monster's body before standing tall next to Igris. Instead of the bird brain, the Noma was. This shadow looked human. Plus, he had a shield and a broad axe. Izuku starts to question how the Nomus were created. If the Nomu was an actual human before being turned into a monster, the shadow kneels with his head bowed. Jesus, those villains were sick if they turned you into that monster. Izuku looks around the shadow. Its blue and black armor looked familiar to Izuku, but he couldn't place it. You were once a hero from America. Izuku yells out before turning to its dead body. What did they do to you? Your name was Iron. He used a massive shield to protect citizens during villain attacks. Holy shit. Izuku stops freaking out when he saw the knight look up at him. Please choose a name for the soldier. I'll keep your old hero name. You will protect the innocent and punish the evil once again. Iron. Izuku smiles. Iron LV, 1. Rank, Knight. Iron rises and stands next to Igris before letting out a roar. Take it easy, Iron. The battle is over. Izuku points up at Iron. Glad to have you on the team. Izuku walks back up the stairs. Igris and Iron look at each other. Igris had to look up some before the Shadow Knight breathes out. Igris pulls the sword from the Nomu and following his leader, Iron turns to the smaller knights before raising his fists and roaring again. The lower knights quickly follow Iron's example. I worry about the future. Izuku looks to his right, seeing Igris nodding. Okay, boys. Let's go back. The shadows drop to the floor, blanketing the bloody mess in black shadows. They swarm around Izuku before disappearing. What did you just do? Aizawa's left hand was shaking some as Izuku makes his way up to the top of the stairs, completed a quest. Izuku was the same height as Aizawa, so they look at each eye to eye. By the way, the two that got away were named Kuro Jairi and Shigaraki, as you so spectacularly stated at the beginning. They broke into Udata yesterday and they are the leaders. Let me know when all MIG, I am here. The doors broke inward as the two that were interrupted glares at the symbol of peace. I am, late, that thing would have killed you or Imazuku shoves his thumb towards All Might. If it was given a chance. You're welcome, senseis. Izuku walks outside as the class was evacuated halfway down the road. Izuku walks towards his class as he pulls his hoodie off, letting his green hair free. Izuku. Ochako jumps at him, and he catches her before getting squeezed in a tight hug. Midoriya, DKU, the class yells once they saw him. He shakes his head, some holding Ochako up. Hey, guys. Glad you got out of there quickly, only thanks to you Greeny. Jiro states, and many agree. So, what happened? Kurashima asks while Aizawa and All Might come back looking green. Nothing important. Izuku answers before putting Ochako down. The main villains got away. They probably will be back sooner or later. All we can do is be ready for the next time it happens. The class nods. Soon the police and teachers finally show up. How did you let those two idiots get away nerd? Katsuki growls but he did want to know what really happened after they left. He and Aizawa came out of the USJ without a scratch on them. Did the nerd really negotiate with villains? Midoriya, you are going to have to come with us, while your class heads back to the dorms. All Might swallows roughly. The USJ was a mass grave for 66 villains. Izuku doesn't even look at him but just nods. Sure. All Might. Let's talk. Izuku turns his head just enough so All Might catches the blue glint in Izuku's eye. Chapter 16, Hero Committee and Talking Izuku sits at a conference table, Aizawa sitting next to him as they wait in silence for others to join. Midoriya, Aizawa starts as he turns to his student who was still in his hero costume since he wasn't given a chance to change yet. I don't know why you ignored me at the USJ, but you need to trust your teachers. We are here to protect you. Aizawa saw the green eyes stare at him while Izuku's face stays neutral. Only fools trust blindly. I am not a fool. Izuku turns away from Aizawa as Nizu, Yagi, and a new face enters the conference room. Aizawa himself was putting together the puzzle that he named Izuku Midoriya, right next to the many other young men and women he teaches. Izuku Midoriya, the man in the trench coat begins while taking his hat off, sitting to the left of Nizu. 
Yagi sat to the principal's right. My name is Naomi Sukachi. I am a detective with from the police force, and I have worked a few times with your teachers. The detective pulls out his phone. Once we start talking about today's events, I will be recording what is said. Izuku nods as his hands were in his lap. Yagi kept staring at Izuku, so it was getting on his never. Do you need something, sir? Izuku asks, pretending as if he didn't know it was all might. Young Midoriya, do you remember me? Yagi asks. That got the attention of everyone at the table. Of course, we meet at Sir Night Eye's agency. When I was selling my collection of All Might figures. Izuku smiles sweetly, but it slowly fell. Or are you talking about when you saved me from the sludge villain a year ago, then left me on a rooftop after telling me, my quirklessness made me completely useless? Izuku was keeping his emotions in check. So, All Might, how's your injury? Nail Mesa chokes on his spit as Nizu's usual smile falls. Aizawa himself just looks at Yagi like he was an idiot. One by one, the three adults turn to Yagi, wanting an answer. Young Midoriya, I did not say that. Yagi quickly corrects, feeling four sets of eyes burning into him. No, not those exact words, but pretty close if I say so myself. Izuku sits straighter with his shoulders back. It's not wrong to dream, Izuku begins and revels in the fact that Yagi flinches, hearing Izuku's impression on him. It was very close to his real voice. However, you need to be realistic, kid. Izuku's hands turn into fists under the table as he recalls the worst day of his life. Well, all might. I guess I finally got a quirk. Only took me an explosion and three days in a coma to get it. Izuku laughs at his dark joke. Also, you're welcome for stopping your assassination plot. The three others quickly unpack everything Izuku just told them. Is everything he just said, the truth Yagi? Aizawa asks while completing one section of the puzzle that gave Aizawa headaches since the beginning of the school year. If Midoriya was quirkless for 13 years, then suddenly manifests a very powerful quirk. He has every reason to turn to villainy. Statistically, only 20% of the population is quirkless, but most of the quirkless population is an older generation. So cut that percentage down to 3% of kids are quirkless worldwide? Kids are cruel and adults more so if they wanted to be. And if the number one hero was that cruel with his words, what type of verbal abuse has Midoriya dealt with? Aizawa still waits for Yagi's response. Yes, but please understand I was trying to keep you safe, Midoriya. Being a hero is a dangerous Joe Dash. Yagi tries to talk, but Izuku let his anger out. Izuku's fist slams against the conference table, causing a deep spiderweb of cracks to spread from the impact point. I do not need your protection, Izuku growls while his eyes flash blue. I believe today proved that, even without my quirk, I have skills that could be useful towards heroics. My teacher fights quirkless, are you saying he is useless as well? Aizawa wasn't expecting that type of outburst as he moves back. Nizu just watches Midoriya's every move, he was creating a profile of the young man in front of him. Distrust of teachers, his social skills are spectacular for someone that was an outcast. Miss Yurarika must be the cause of that. A first friend since he was four, the two of them are very close, Nizu's mind races as he kept adding information. Put down by his hero and wants to prove his strength to those who put him down. Bakugo may be someone to talk to about Midoriya, Nizu's brain came to a halt when Izuku speaks again, I have spent 13 years watching heroes come and go from the rankings. I have crafted my analysis in a way that any quirkless person could defeat some of the top heroes. Every stomach drops at that bit of information. This young man could destroy any hero he pleased or sold the information for money. Villains would pay millions for that type of information. Those thoughts were shot down as Izuku continues. Never did I once think, how much would a villain pay for this type of information? Never. Even after you smashed my dreams, I kept your secret that you are nothing more than a washed up hero waiting to kill over any moment. Izuku was gripping the table's edge before he relaxes. I wanna say thank you, that confuses the group of adults. Really, thank you, all might, because that was the last day I would ever be that weak, timid little boy that everyone saw me as. I'm done being treated like a child that needs to be protected, especially when no one ever protected me before. Izuku's grip on the table snaps the edge and making the piece of the metal ball up in his fist. 
I don't need protection, I never needed it. I can protect myself, the heroes and detective watches Izuku finally realize he was crying. They stay silent while the young man reaches touching his wet cheek before quickly wiping it dry. Izuku sits back in his chair, throwing the metal ball that once was the table onto the table. Let's get this interview over with please, detective. Izuku closes his eyes while collecting himself, just need your account on the event that happened in. The detective was cut off by a knock on the door. Present Mike enters, looking scared. Yes, Yamada. Nizo asks in a strained voice, the hero commission is here. Mike flinches as Nizo turns to him quickly. No smile on the principal's face, why? Nizo asks while frowning, they said they wanted to speak with Midoriya. Mike coughs while looking away and pointing right outside the door before he was not so gently moved away from it. Two men walk in, both dressed in suits, one older than the second man. Izuku sits straighter, looking at the older man, he had scars across his temple up to his hairline. One was across the back of his neck, whoever this man is, he's powerful. Izuku thought, Chairman Gunny, may I ask what you are doing here? Nizu asks. Gunny smiles politely down at the principal but saw the condition of the table and grins. Nizu, once again, I commend you on finding another promising underground hero. The chairman keeps his calm smile while looking over to Izuku. Izuku, on the other hand, feels Aizawa tense next to him. He is still a first year. Not even done with his first week. Nizu stresses, yet he already has a body count higher than Eraser Head. The chairman motions. Don't worry, I am not poaching him from your school. Just here to talk, the chairman sits down with his second hovering next to him. Izuku studies the second man, he had slicked back orange hair and some strands hanging over his forehead. He still has not taken off the sunglasses, please clear out until we are finished speaking. Eraser head. You are free to stay if you would like. Yagi, the detective, and Niza left. Eraser head turns to Izuku, looking at him, points ear at Aizawa. Izuku nods. You can stay. You know the man more than me. Izuku answers softly. Aizawa stays seated. Izuku Midoriya, nice to meet you. My name is Goguni. The older man holds his hand out. Izuku reaches across the table, shaking his hand. Are you Korean? Izuku asks since the name was not a typical Japanese name. Sharp, I like that and potential underground heroes. And yes, my mother was Korean before moving to Japan. Gunny sits back, and Izuku follows. He's older than 80, but his build reminds me of retired wrestlers. Not to mention, he's stronger than me. Izuku observes. For now. I would like to congratulate you on catching my attention. It's not an easy thing to do so. Just ask your teacher. Gunny looks over to Aizawa, who had his arms crossed but nods. There are a few more years of growth before the committee can offer you anything of worth, but we can help you go down a different path. The chairman's posture was relaxed while he continues, but Izuku could feel the calculating eyes and tone. Izuku looks over to Aizawa, who was listening and watching Izuku. You mean underground, correct? Izuku asks. Yes, we can help. This country is currently not being run by the government, but rather the heroes. Who protects the citizens from villains? The ones above them are the hero committee. Aizawa once stood in our ranks before taking a job with UA. The hero committee targets specific villains. Such villains hide in the shadows. The ones you never see daylight heroes fight or on the news. The balance of this country is currently barely held together, as you know. All Might is losing power and doesn't have a successor yet. So, the hero committee must pick up the slack so the system doesn't crumble when he inevitably retires. Soon more villains will be coming. Gunny speaks firmly, and with authority, Izuku couldn't ignore. I watched the USJ footage. I must say you handled yourself well while bagging four top 50 targets we were currently hunting each with a bounty of 200,000 yen a head. So, you are trying to hire me to be an assassin? Izuku questions while paying attention to his sensei's aura, which Aizawa wasn't much help since he was calm. Assassin is a word for it but rather think of it as a bounty hunter. Dead or alive. Some villains are needed alive for the information they hold, but
but others need to be eliminated for the public safety. The only difference is you do not get public recognition if you bring a villain alive. Then there is the law and the system. Normal government authority isn't powerful enough to keep heroes in check as well as smarter villains that know how to hide. That's why the hero committee is needed. Once again, I can't hire you until your third year, but I can offer you something. Gunny stands before placing a card down on the table. This will keep you out of legal trouble if you ever need to bring a villain to justice in an emergency. Izuku looks down at the card seeing it was a temporary hero license without a hero name in the slot. It did have a black shield stamped on the corner of it. He's seen hero licenses before, never seen a mark like that. All you have to do is fill in the name. We at the Hero Commotion will be keeping a close eye on you Midoriya as you and your skills grow. My number is on the back if you wish to speak more. Please try to stay clean while at UA. We can only cover up so many bodies. Show restraint for now, Gunny Bows. Good to see you again, Aizawa. Have a good day. The two men left, leaving Aizawa and Midoriya alone. Key. Midoriya, if you go down that path. Just be ready to take out heroes as well. If you wish to talk about it, please don't hesitate to ask me. It's your choice, but you will want the full scope of what an underground hero does, let me know. Aizawa stands up and leaves the room after the committee. This is not an opportunity that comes by every day. Izuku thinks to himself. But I have three years to decide. Izuku places the card into his wallet as he sits alone in the conference room. The detective comes into the room, swallowing softly. Midoriya, I will not be recording you anymore, but for the investigation, do you have any information that may be helpful? The detective pulls out his pen and paper. Izuku nods, and they spend an hour talking about the Nomu and the villains. As they were coming to an end, Izuku sighs and decides it would be for the best if the detective knew about Iron. Sir, the Nomu was created from an American hero that went missing around six years ago. The hero's name was Iron. He used a shield and axe to protect civilians while beating back villains. His quirk was a type of taunting scream. Shigaraki stated that the Nomu had multiple quirks. Izuku admitted, How do you know that? The detective looks up from his notepad. It's an aspect of my quirk. After Idris and magicians killed the Nomu, I recognized the shadows the Nomu created. It was Iron. Izuku stands up after an hour or two of sitting was finally getting to him. That's all I have for you if I find out more should I contact you or tell the teachers. Izuku was close to falling asleep on his feet. Today has been long for the monarch. Here is my card. Please let me know if you do find something else out. Thank you again, Midoriya. The detective hands over his business card with his number and email on it. Izuku nods and bows towards the detective before taking his leave. He found the hallways empty, he strolls back to the dorms. When he opens the door, he smells pizza, which made his stomach growl. Guess it's been a while since lunch. Izuku looked over at the clock seeing it was 6 p.m. Izuku. Ochako calls from the couch. Most of the class gathered while watching some cheesy action movie. Hey, Ochako. What nobody wanted to cook? Izuku jokes as he grabs a few slices out of the bull box before throwing it on a plate. Yeah, we were too lazy. Ochako smiles while seeing Izuku was still in his hero costume. You going to get changed? After I eat. I'm starving after that interview. Izuku sat down at the table and finally got hushed as they turned back to the movie. Izuku finishes eating while thinking about his meeting with the chairman. I'll have to talk to Aizawa about it. Izuku finishes his plate before cleaning it and disappearing upstairs. The classes continued the next day like nothing happened. The USJ shut down until it could be cleaned. The teachers explained to the student body that the emergency was a false alarm and apologized for ending classes the day earlier. Overall everything was back to normal. Aizawa walked into the room, still tired from the events that occurred yesterday. Yudade decided to keep the villain attack quiet due to the actions of your classmate. Aizawa begins. The Hero Commission agreed with the decision, so do not speak about it to other students or the public. You will all be busy because the UA Sports Festival is fast approaching. The comment about the USJ quickly forgotten at the mention of the Sports Festival. The class gets excited. Is that wise, Sensei? Momo questioned from the back. 
with what just happened at the USJ, wouldn't they try to attack again? Udata must go about its business like it never happened, but there will be five times the police presence. Anyhow, our sports festival is the greatest opportunity you'll get. It's not an event that can be cancelled over a few villains. Aizawa drones on, the nation's top heroes will all be watching, they'll be there as scouts, Momo commented, they'll be looking to hire us as sidekicks after we graduate. That's how it's done. Kaminari smiled over at Jiro, and a lot of those sidekicks never managed to go solo. They're sidekicks forever. Jiro pointed the comment right at Kaminari. Izuku could see the arrow drive through the blonde's chest as he looked down in pain. This happens once a year, so you've got three chances. If you are hoping to become a hero, this is an event you can't miss. Aizawa finished as Mike walks into the class. The fourth period ends, and it was lunchtime. Izuku gets up after kicking his bag under his desk so that it wouldn't be in the way. At least the committee in UA covered up the USJ. I guess I should have held back, but I got 800,000 yen in my account. Creepy, they just put the cash in for the villains I took down. This has got me, so freaking pumped. Kurashima knocked Izuku out of his head. If we show our stuff here, that's one big step towards going pro. Everyone's excited. Izuku mumbles, not realizing Ida was right next to him. And you aren't. Ida looked towards him. Izuku just shrugged. It happens every year. I guess I am excited about seeing how everyone uses their quirks, but it's the same three events usually. One big elimination to test mobility and quick thinking, the second event is usually a team exercise and then the last one. 1v. 1 fights, Izuku offhandedly analyzed the past 13 years of watching the sports festival into those three sentences, yeah. But we get to participate this time. Kurashima grinned and raised his fist energetically. Izuku smiled softly and nodded. Yeah, you're right, Kirishima. Izuku felt a dark aura behind him. Ida. Izuku. The boys turned towards the dark voice filled with conviction. At this sports festival. Let's do our best. Ochako had a devil's grin painted on her face. What happened to your face, Yuraraka? Ida chopped some. There's the little devil, Izuku smirked. I pray to God. I don't go against her. She would be a mean opponent. Maybe it's that Tiaitsuyu slaps Mineta before he could finish. Everyone. I'm gonna crush this. Yuraraka pumped her fist up. Yeah, talk about inconsistent characterization. Kurashima joked while his sweat dropped. Izuku pulls up his inventory seeing a new key. He quickly materialized it. The ice key was cold to the touch like it was created from real ice that never melted. I should probably dress warmly for this dungeon Izuku places the key away and rubbed his neck. I'll use it as training for the sports festival. Izuku smiled as the class heads out for lunch. He catches up to Ochako and Ida, both were waiting for him. Chapter 17, Cold Dungeons and Uninvited Guest Izuku put in a request to leave campus, to visit his mother. It was more or less a lie. He needs to go to a beach near his mother's apartment. The ice key that he still hasn't found out how it got in his inventory was instructing him to go. He leaves the gates of UA without noticing another Yudata student following him. Izuka rolls his neck slowly once his feet hit the sand. Well, then. Let's go. Izuku manifests the key before opening a portal. The blue sparks begin on the dark beach as the sun already fell. A blue blur shoots past Izuku going inside the portal. Hey! Izuku runs through the portal. From the world side, the portal turns red before disappearing, not to draw attention. From inside the dungeon, it was a winter wonderland. The snow was untouched as Izuku, and his uninvited guest stands in the opening surrounded by snow-covered trees. Wow, so this is your quirk? You know everyone's had their eyes on you since you cut down the zero-pointer. Togata said Sir Knight I already meet you a few months back. Hey, where is the portal? Where are we? Why is it snowing? The blue-haired girl was floating around with golden energy coming from her hands. Stop! Izuku glares at the girl while watching the tree line. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Oh, I'm Nijai Hado. Third year Yudata student and assigned to watch over you during your trip to your mother's. Hado lands next to Izuku while smiling, Izuku keeps glaring towards the third year. 
Hey do. What you just did was put your life in danger. Izuku's hand went out and snatches an ice arrow out of the air before hitting Hado in the face. She jumps back and gets into a fighting stance. On the trees. Hado was a lot calmer than Izuku expected. Then again, she is a third year. Izuku turns to the tree line seeing figures standing on the branches. Ice blue eyes were watching the two humans in the dungeon. Ice elves. Izuku felt the ice digging into his skin, but it was easy to ignore. Their eyes are sharp, they manage to single out the weaker of the two of us. Izuku hears a sound of protest from Hado, but he didn't pay attention. His eyes were on the cocky elf. If this were a few months ago, that arrow would have been aimed at me. Izuku feels the vein in his head pulse while the elf motions his thumb across his throat. Oh, Izuku crushes the ice arrow, and the ice once on his hand explodes off the skin. The elves jump deeper into the forest. I don't think they're welcoming us. Hado crosses her arms while rubbing her cold skin. We're stranded until we kill the boss, Izuku informs Hado while throwing a small winter coat at her. This is my world, so you listen to me. Got it? Hado pulls on the warm layer. Where did you get this? She questions while staying behind Izuku. They walk into the woods to the west. Izuku saw deep claw marks in the trees that remind him of bear marks. If there are bears, then the elves will stay away, for now. I have an inventory system for my quirk. Also, stop asking questions. I'm the one that is supposed to ask questions like, why did you go through a portal? Are you crazy? Izuku turns towards the girl who was currently burying herself in the winter coat. She was at least a head shorter than him, so he needs to look down at her. I was curious. Like I said, everyone's been mentioning you since the beginning of school. She shrugs. At least you are calm. Izuku sighs tiredly. Well, even if I'm curious, I'm not stupid. I jump into an unknown portal that you created out of a key. I expected the unexpected. Also, we shouldn't go further. Hado points out towards the trees. The area is covered with bare territory markings. I saw a documentary. She said proudly, so you're saying this area is full of bears? Izuku keeps a straight face. Hado stares up the boy. What, did I say something wrong? Yes. S so we should turn back. Hado crosses her arms over her chest. That's why we're moving into the forest. Izuku strolls forwards with his hands in his pockets. Huh. Did you not hear me? Hado yells. If this is the bear's territory, we only have to worry about bears while in the forest. Izuku turns his head so he could look at his senpai. Bears are more reasonable than ice elves. Izuku states, Hado's brain caught up, and her mouth opens to retort before shutting. Ah, if there are a lot of bears in the area, meaning there are no stronger predators here, we won't encounter any stronger monster. She looks down at the snow. Why did I not think of that? Because this is your first time in a dungeon. This is different from villains you may have fought. These will always go for the kill instead of escape. Izuku's eyes dart around, some making sure there was no one following them. Who are you, really? Hado asks while sinking into the winter coat more since it was frigid in the dungeon. She was in inappropriate clothing for winter. Since this is my quirk, it's my reasonability to protect you. However, don't ask me anything. Don't ask me any questions and don't demand anything from me. Izuku equips his winter coat that had a fur collar and hood. Izuku and Hado turn towards a large bear walking towards them. It had pure white fur, blue crystals in its chest, and crimson red eyes. Just like other monsters, all were looking for blood. Izuku observes as Hado gets ready to fight. I'll distract it. While you find an opening in. Hado gets stopped by Izuku, grabbing her hood. What are you doing? I'll say this clearly. I'll be hunting monsters just by myself. Izuku keeps his eye on the bear. Can't waste the experience just because she is here. I don't care how strong you are, that is a bear. You can't win by yourself. Hado glares at Izuku, title change. Izuku left Hado's side, title, the one who overcame adversity, a title given to those who overcame, adversity heroically, your stats increase proportionally, to your missing health, 1% stat increase every 1% HP missing, 2. Title, Wolf Slayer, a title given to a hunter proficient, in fights against wolves, 
40% increased stat against beast type monsters, the bear rears back its sharp claws ready to kill. The bear brings it down, slamming it on the floor where Azuka once stood. The snow compresses under the paw before the bear looks upwards. Izuku was feet above the bear's head as his body comes down with the help of gravity. With this title, I should be able to bring this beast down with just my hands. Izuku pulls his arm back, making a fist as he fell. As he was inches above the bear. Izuku throws his fist downwards right on top of the bear's head. The sound of the skull breaking fills Hato's ears. She stares with questions building in her head. Izuku's attack took a second to reverberate through the bear, making it crumble to the floor. Hato's eyes widen, seeing Izuku sitting on the bear. A bear in a single hit? Hato whimpers in silence as the questions were overflowing. Just as I thought, since the standard is higher, the experience gain is a difference, Izuku smirks. You leveled up. Why, you, just who are you? Hato gaps some letting the question out. At UA. Hey, has anyone seen Izuku? Ochako asks after sitting down at the dinner table. Bakugo decided Slash was forced Slash to cook tonight with Kurashima's help. He said he went to visit his mother, Momo answers. He said he would be back late, so don't wait on him. Ochako and Katsuki both perk up before looking at each other. Yeah, right. Katsuki hissed under his breath. Auntie hasn't apologized yet. Aizawa was rushing towards Nizu's office. Hato and Midoriya's trackers and their school badges just went offline. Seconds between each other. Where were they last transmitting from? Nizu asks without looking up from his computer. A beach near Midoriya's mother's apartment, Aizawa answers. Midoriya said he would be back tonight. So if they are not back by the morning, we will go looking. The badges could have just malfunctioned. Kaminari is in the same class. He has already fried four of his badges. Nisa pulls up the tracking system. I will let you know if they pop back online. Aizawa nods softly, still holding onto his phone tightly. Back in the dungeon, Izuku and Hado sit around a fire that Izuku started. So, do you have any siblings? Hado asks while taking a bite out of the bear meat. Izuku, on the other hand, was making sure the fire would stay lit for the night. No, I don't. Izuku stands up once he was satisfied with the fire. I need to exercise. Inside here? Hato looks around the dark forest. If I don't, there will be a penalty. I will be close by, stay here. Izuku keeps his promise as he could still hear Hato talking to herself since she was trying to figure out Izuku. He could also hear the fire from his spot as he begins to do his daily quest. I can't leave her behind if I end up in a penalty zone. She's strong, but the elves would kill her if given a chance. I need to find the rest of the bears. We are deep enough in the territory that the elves shouldn't inter, but just in case, Izuku rolls his neck while thinking. Iron Izuku watches the giant knight come from the shadows. Stay hidden but watch Hado. If anything happens to her, I will never call on you again. Got it? The tank nods before going off to watch over Hado without being seen. Well, since that is taken care of, time to go hunting. The sun slowly rises as Izuku finds cave entrance, and crimson eyes bleed from the shadows. Multiple ice bears come out from the cave. The numbers are roughly the same? Izuku asks while counting the bears, come out. The white snow was coated in pitch black shadows as his army rises from the depths. They stand behind Izuku while he couldn't help the smile on his face, the power he felt with his army standing ready to fight. Go, Izuku watches his knights go to work. The bears are stronger than the villains at the USJ. He observes a few knights get shredded by the bears' claws before reforming to attack again, the magicians help from the edges of the battle firing at a few bears. The strength of shadow soldiers are still beyond my expectation. Izuku talks to himself as he watches the battle, the fire from the magicians lights up his front side. This unbelievable regeneration is almost comparable to immortality. But it does consume massive amounts of mana. MP, 1567-1860. A deep roar comes from the cave before a giant bear comes out looking fierce. The scars crossed over its body proved its battle capabilities. It was also ten times the size of the lower level bears. The leader appears. Izuku watches as night after night gets shredded by the leader until his mana drops to zero. Shadow soldiers can no longer re-interact due to lack of mana. 
Igris. Izuku calls out his commander. The knight stands beside his monarch, ready, the large black sword in Igris's right hand. Igris didn't need the order, he rushes forward with the same speeds he used at USJ. Izuku didn't see Igris attack, he just saw the leader of the bears start to bleed heavily. Izuku looks up, seeing Igris above the bear while on a tall tree in a crouched position, before pushing off and attacking again. Slicing the leader more, Igris slams his sword through the bear's arm as it tries to climb. Blue and black mix as Igris move faster using the same tactic he used against the Nomu, attacking the ligaments until the leader bear stands entirely still. The white fur was soaked red. Igris stands in front of the bear as it towers over the night, but the bear wasn't moving anymore, until the bear rears its head back and roars. Only to have the roar cut off when Igris decapitates it. Igris catches the head before bringing it back to Izuku under his arm, just like the USJ. I would have stood no chance if Igris used his sword back then. At my current level, we're at equal footing. Igris drops the head at Izuku's feet before kneeling. No, Izuku corrects himself, looking at the knight that was kneeling before him. He is above me. Name, Midoriya Izuku. Level, 52. You've done well. Izuku grabs Igris's shoulder while smiling. Izuku walks over towards the bear's dead body. Time to turn him into my shadow soldier. Arise. Shadows pour from the body of the monster bear. You have successfully extracted the shadow. Shadow monster LV.1. Multiple alarms go off as the smaller bear's shadows also stand. Izuku looks across the shadow monsters. The leader was towering over him, but Izuku didn't worry anymore. They were under his command now. Good. Izuku makes his way back to Iron and Hado, who was sitting next to each other, making faces to each other. Both of them are goofballs. Izuku rolls his eyes at their antics. Hado smiles up at Iron before Iron disappears. Glad you are having fun, but we have company. Izuku turns towards the empty field. How about you guys undo your stealth? Due to your powerful energy, hiding is pointless. Hado quickly got up as the elves slowly became visible. Izuku stares at the army before him. What chilling energy! Ice elves! And with numbers! Hado softly swallows while bawling her fists up, forgetting the shadow warrior she was having fun with minutes ago. The leader opens his mouth, but no language she ever heard came out. There really was one. A useful guy. The leader's voice fills Izuku's ears, which surprises him. What? You can talk? Izuku questions. The leader looks shocked from on top of his horse. You know our language? Huh? How is conversation possible? Izuku was confused on top of surprise like the leader. Can you also speak with the monster? Hado questions before shutting up, remembering his rule. Right this is his quirk. Is this an effect from my quirk? Izuku questions himself. Able to converse. How splendid. There's someone I want to introduce. The leader motions to the same elf Izuku saw at the beginning of the dungeon. Izuku's vein and his forehead bulge again, remembering the gesture the elf made. You're already acquaintances. He's the one who notified us that there's someone strong among the humans. The leader continues talking while the others stay quiet. This guy wanted to face off with you, so. The leader's voice comes to a stop as his man was missing his head. Izuku keeps one of his hands in his pocket but his right hand was holding his dagger. The headless elf falls to his knees before falling forward. Anything else to say? Izuku asks dully. The leader grins madly. You're an amusing guy. Daggers clash together before Izuku lands back in front of the Hado. Who is staring at the dead elf in the snow? He killed the elf. I didn't even see him move. He's not willing to give up his life so easily. Izuku sighs while watching the leader spin the white dagger in his hand. I have a proposal. The dagger keeps spinning. It won't be detrimental to you, but first, let me ask you a question. The leader gets off his horse and stands tall next to it. Despite not being a human, why are you among the humans? What the hell are you talking about? Izuku questions with a dull look on his face. Ha ha, are you not aware of it? In our heads, there's a constant voice speaking to us. The leader elf taps his head. To kill humans, but I can't hear the voice in your presence, a voice telling them to kill humans? Is it similar to my quirk's orders? 
Can I even call it a quirk anymore? But then again, dungeons aren't popping up all over the world. Izuku stops and swallows roughly. Could there be dungeons that open all over the world? Someone could enter without knowing what they are walking into. People could die if these guys are getting orders to kill humans. Izuku clenches his dagger tighter at the new theories popping into his mind. There's no need for us to fight. We do not want unnecessary casualties in our end. The leader tries to be diplomatic with Izuku, but the leader said the wrong words. Hand over the human behind you, then I'll spare your life. How about it? The leader holds out his blue hand while smiling. If we are asking questions here, then here's mine. Who are you guys? Izuku watches the leader's face keep the same smug smile while he talks. Where did you come from, and why are you trying to kill humans? We are. The elf seems to glitch out. There's no need for us to fight. We do not want unnecessary casualties in our end. The elf repeats. What was that just now? Is he avoiding my question? Or? Izuku was interrupted. Do you accept our proposal? The other elves were getting ready behind their leader, all having the same smug smile on their faces. I refuse, Izuku answers as simply as he could. Do you plan on fighting my soldiers and me? Do you think you would stand our numbers by yourself? The elves didn't lose their smiles, but they did disappear behind shadowed faces. Numbers? Izuku questions while tilting his head some. What numbers? Shadows came from the snow as Hato looks around, seeing the same type of shadow she saw on the goofy big guy. What is this? She asks before looking back at where the shadows seem to be coming from. The tall green-haired boy standing up to murdering elves, black soldiers and black bears? She gulps. No way. This is all Midoriya. She feels a hand on her shoulder, and she turns, seeing the same big guy next to her, smiling at her. S sorry. She squeaks as Iron took his spot in front of Hato while eyeing the enemies. What a cheap trick. The leader rolls his eyes. Is it a cheap trick? Izuku adopts a small smile. Let them underestimate my shadow soldiers. A second later, the two armies clash together. Izuku observed the battle, knowing Iron was still protecting his senpai. Good job Iron. He thought while turning back towards the fight, they may be immortal, but the numbers will diminish if they keep getting destroyed. A few knights get cut apart by the elves. A few catch ice arrows. Since I leveled them up, they should be able to handle ice elves, but... Izuku sees one knight get cut in half by the leader. He's the problem. I already clocked his strength but now I can tell he is stronger. I will need Igris and Iron if we are going to beat him. Ordinary soldiers won't do. My name is Baruka. The leader of the elves speaks again. What is yours? Izuku blinks at Baruka before speaking. Izuku Midoriya. Izuku manifests his Rasaka's dagger in his left hand while still gripping the night killer in his right. He dashes forward before jumping at Baruka. Izuku slices downwards, but Baruka just steps backward to dodge the attack. Baruka places his foot over Rasaka's dagger, but Izuku dematerializes it so he could free the blade. Izuku materializes it again, aiming for Baruka's face. The elf blocks the knife with his own. Izuku comes up with his right dagger only to get kicked in the side by the tall elf and sent backward. Izuku lands 21 feet away, both blades at his side. It's been a while since I had this much excitement. Baruka smiles more while a bright light above the elf alerts him and making him look up only to get crushed by a fireball from Izuku's magician. Thanks to my magician, I gained some time. There's no way he died from that. Izuku watches the fire roar from the spot Baruka was standing. Stop wasting time and come out. Izuku stands by as Baruka's figure walks out of the fire. Is this the limit of your soldiers? Baruka shoots forward quickly, only to see shadows wrap around Izuku, Igris, Iron, time to get to work. The last thing Baruka saw was Izuku's left eye burning a cold blue instead of green the elf had seen. How interesting! Baruka was just feet away from Izuku now as the shadows surround him. There's no point in hiding, the elf jumps towards the blue and black shadows only for Igris, to come from the shadows swinging. The elf maneuvers in the air dodging Igris's sword. Do you think this lone soldier is enough to stop me? Baruka cuts Igris's left arm off before getting closer. Iron was next to Izuku now. Of course not, Izuku answers honestly. 
KWUUUUUUUUH Iron yells loudly while raising both his shield and axe. Iron has used skill, taunting cry, dungeon boss has been taunted, another amusing guy has shown up. Baruka starts screaming as the once icy blue glow of his eyes turns crimson red like the rest of the monsters Azuku has faced. I'll cut you down first, Baruka yells before attacking Iron. Iron just blocks the attack with his massive shield before counterattacking. The elf jumps behind Iron. This slow soldier is no match for me, Baruka saw three figures moving to attack. Iron in the middle, Igris to the left of Iron and Izuku to the right, is that so? How about all three of us? Izuku's eyes burn brighter as the corners of his lips cork upwards into a small grin, Hado stands away from the battle. Not sure if there was anything she could do to help. Does he always fight like this? Will he fight humans like this? Will he always go for the kill? I've never seen a hero fight like this. Am I in a dream? Hado pinches her cheek hard until she felt pain. Baruko was having a hard time dodging all three attackers as Izuku was able to find a blind spot and stab Baruka in the back. Effect, paralysis has activated. Effect, bleed has activated. Baruka grunts while Izuku rips the dagger out. To be able to dodge a fatal strike in this situation. Blue eyes glare upwards towards Crimson. Izuku jumps away as Baruka faces him. You trash are quite persistent. The elf wasn't smiling anymore. Izuku takes that as a win. The enemy's resistance was too high. The effect was cancelled. You're not in the position to say such a thing. Izuku mocks his enemy while smiling freely now. How about you look around? Baruka turns and freezing at the sight before him. Is that all your soldiers can do? Izuku throws the elf's words back in his face as the battlefield was filled with dead elves while ice bears stood over their corpses. Izuku and his two highest leveled shadow soldiers standing to his sides. You bastard. Baruka yells. Those soldiers will all vanish when I get rid of you. Baruka lunges for the monarch. Izuku throws his night killer at Baruka. Throwing away your weapon? You, skill, dominators touch LV.1. Active skill, no mana required. You can control objects without, touching them. A blue hue glows around Izuku's right hand as he pushes the dagger to fly faster through the air. It's accelerating. Baruka's eyes widen, seeing the weapon turn into a blur of red. The dagger smashes against Baruka's and shattering the blue blade. Uaya. Iron yells before wrapping Baruka in a bear hug, lifting him off the floor. The three magicians begin casting a large spell before dropping the biggest fireball they have onto Baruka's head. The fire gets blasted away while Iron was torn apart, leaving a shirtless Baruka standing in the middle of the battlefield. You bastards. Baruka screams louder as his body is beaten up and charred. I'll kill you all. The sound of a dagger slicing through flesh was heard making Baruka look down, seeing Izuku materialize in front of him. He was holding the dagger that was currently inside the elf's torso. Looks like this is the end. Izuku talks just loud enough for Baruka to hear. The elf grabs Izuku's forearm. Who do you think you're facing? The elf raises his free hand to hit Izuku. Iron was behind the king elf with his axe raised. Izuku moves backward as Iron strikes Baruka down. I already told you. Izuku's voice fills Baruka's large ears. This is the end. Baruka gazes up, seeing Izuku standing in front of him before his head drops back into the snow. The dungeon boss has been slain. You leveled up. You leveled up. Izuku breathes out, seeing the messages. It's finally over. Iron yells again as he bashes his axe against the dead boss's body a few times. Hey, hey! Izuku yells out. Stop it already. Iron comes to a stop, and Izuku breaths out. Take it easy. Izuku turns towards Hado, who is surrounded by smaller knights protecting her. Let's go back. Izuku calls out to her. Go back? She questions before seeing the same blue portal they came through on start to open near the tree line, outside the gate. Izuku looks towards it. She falls onto her but now that it was over, we can go home. She smiles weakly. Izuku, on the other hand, looks down at the body. Now, this guy. Chapter 18, Senpai's and Sports Festival. Hado quickly got out of the dungeon as she sits on the beach, still wrapped up in the winter coat. 
she heard Izuku say arise a few times before she left the frozen hell she was just in. Izuku steps out of the blue portal like it was any other day. He turns back, making sure the gate disappears. He nods softly, seeing it close and fizzle out of existence. Was it due to our difference in strength? Izuku thinks back to shadow extraction that failed on Baruka. What a waste. Izuku crouches down, seeing his senpai holding the coat tightly around her. Are you okay, Hato senpai Yes, it's just different from what I'm used to. I also have millions of questions. Hato looks up at her younger. The guy who just protected her the entire time they were inside. He caught an arrow out of midair, that was pretty cool. He took down a bear in one punch, how could I forget that, can All Might do that? Maybe Tiger from the Wild Pussycats can as well, questions can wait for another day. I know you must be tired. As Izuku speaks, Hato couldn't stop a yawn from escaping. She covers her mouth some before nodding, he holds out his hand once he unequips his coat but lets her keep hers since she was still cold. Hato takes it as he pulls her to her feet. Good, let's get back to UA. Izuku and Hato walk back to U.A in silence. Until Aizawa drops down in front of them. Izuku already had a blade at the ready in case it was a villain. Easy Midoriya. It's just me. Aizawa pulls his signature yellow goggles off. Hello, Aizawa-sensei. Hato waves with less enthusiasm than she usually had. That made Aizawa's attention zero in on the both of them. Neither look injured, Midoriya always was high-strung and would jump when it got too loud too fast. The dagger he manifested was new, though. Hello, Nijire. You two do know it's 3.50 am correct? Aizawa informs while looking at his watch. And we do have classes tomorrow, are you heading in as well? Midoriya asks after letting his new blade go, no wonder I'm so tired. Nijire yawns. How long were we inside the dungeon? Is timing different? Oh, maybe. She yawns again. Yes, I was waiting for you to come back. After the false alarm, Aizawa strains his tone. I wanted to make sure you were alright. Is that why you sent Hato senpai to watch over me? Izuku feels the blue-haired third year lean against him, apparently almost asleep now. Don't blame her. Dungeons mess with your sense of time and a few hours in the real world could be days inside a dungeon. Izuku knew he would be asked questions once she found him again. Yes, Aizawa knows it was better to tell the truth than a lie. Izuku sighs. Very well, Izuku gently picking Nijire up since she looks ready to fall asleep on her feet. Shall we go? Hato quickly got comfortable in his arms as Aizawa just nods. The three walks back to UA. Hato had fallen asleep during the ride. Where did she get the coat, and why? Aizawa speaks in a soft tone as they walk the empty streets. She got cold, Izuku states in a dull tone. I couldn't let my senpai get a cold now, can I? Izuku smirks some. Aizawa just drops it since he wouldn't get a straight answer from Midoriya. They continue the walk back in silence. What's the system for underground heroes? Aizawa perks up at Midoriya's question. The system, HM, Aizawa keeps a straight face, but he was chuckling inside. It's the same as Daylight Heroics except for a few key details. You will be learning most of this between Heroics and Hero Laws next year. Heroics has rankings. We rank villains, heroes, and some civilians between their quirks, minds, and motives. For Heroics, it runs down the hero rankings. Top heroes are usually S-ranked. They have the firepower to back it up. It goes down the rankings, A, B, C, D, and E. Ranked E's are usually classed as civilians. For the villains, you have S-ranked villains that are usually on underground heroes lists. Same with A-ranked. The rest are too dumb or pushed over to daylight heroes to deal with. Aizawa sighs. So daylight heroes don't deal with S-ranked villains? At all? Izuku feels Nijire move some before coming to a rest laying her head on his chest. No, they still deal with high-ranked villains if they are in the public's eye. Look at the hero killer, Stain. Daylight heroes are always searching for big fishes but still must deal with the smaller fishes. Underground, we actively hunt for high-ranked villains, so they don't get the chance to get a spotlight. Aizawa and Midoriya make it to the gates of UA. The underground is unknown to the daylighters, 
for a good reason, you need a certain personality to deal with it. Plus, the strength, no one under a rank do not get invited to become an underground hero. Aizawa concludes, what do you think Shigaraki and Kirojiri are ranked? Izuku's grip tightens around Nijire subconsciously, thinking back to the killing intent he felt rolling off Shigaraki, what do you think? Use Gunhi as an example or All Might. They are both S-ranked heroes. Aizawa swipes his card, making the Udata gate drop, what are you? Izuku asks curiously, a ranked, Aizawa answers, Kirojiri was a rank then. Warp quirks are extremely rare like yours, and if he can use his warps like I think he can. He might be an S-rank. Izuku explains, and Shigaraki? Aizawa turns to look at Izuku. A sleeping Hado in his arms with her head resting on his chest. Aizawa will never say it out loud, but Nijire was one of his favorite students. She could fall asleep anywhere if she was tired enough or low energy. Plus, the big three were already making a name for themselves. Be rank for now, but a lot of room to grow. The USJ was just his opening act. He will be back. Izuku looks at Aizawa for his answer. You will be a great daylight hero or underground hero Midoriya. Whatever you decided. 3A dorms are this way. Let's drop Nijire off then get some rest. The other two idiots are probably waiting for her to come back anyways. Aizawa leads Midoriya to the third year dorms. Once they walk into the dorm, they see two students passed out on the couch. One had dark hair and was leaning against a muscular blonde that could have been All Might's son in a different life. Aizawa just sighs before smacking them both upside the head making them jump up into combat stances. Aizawa sensei. The blonde whisper yells while relaxing. The darker haired body stares at Midoriya before hiding behind the blonde. Oh, hello, you must be Midoriya. The blonde smiles brightly, maybe he is All Might's son. WW what or why you doing W with Nijire? The darker haired student asks in a nervous tone. Be nice, Tamaki. Nijire probably fell asleep while watching over Midoriya. We can take her off your hands. The blonde moves to take Nijire. Izuku just looks at Aizawa, who nods. Izuku hands over the sleeping girl. Thank you for taking care of her, even if she was supposed to take care of you. It's fine, she did her job. She only fell asleep after we meet up with Aizawa sensei. Izuku breaths out while still getting watched by Tamaki. Oh, sorry. I'm Mirio Togata. The nervous guy is Tamaki Amajiki, and this Mirio holds up Nijire some. You already meet. Nijire, it's late if you want to bug each other do it tomorrow. Aizawa grabs Midoriya's hood pulling him. You all have class tomorrow, right? Mirio stands straighter. Good night sensei, you as well, Midoriya. Aizawa drags Izuku back to a one dorms. Go to sleep, sports festival is in two days. Yes sensei, thank you for answering my questions earlier. Izuku leaves Aizawa in the common room as he goes to his room. He checks the time seeing it was already 5 a.m. I'm not getting sleep tonight. Izuku thinks dully before bringing up his new dagger. Item, Baruka's dagger. Item class, A, type, dagger. A dagger wielded by the great, warrior, Baruka. The lightweight, magic enchantment will make the Wielder more agile. Attack 110. Agility 10. At least I left the dungeon with something. Izuku spins the light blue dagger in his hands before dematerializing the blade. Just do my daily quest till the sports festival. Once I get a week off, I'll travel to the Demon Gate again. The day of the UA sports festival. Everyone was waiting in their respective waiting room. There was a small group waiting for class A one of the days they were leaving class for the day. Bakugo spouted pure truth. They were in class A because they proved themselves and wouldn't be taken down so easily. It was stupid to think otherwise. Even Hagakure has been taking martial arts since she figured out she wanted to be a hero. Class A was dangerous, and other classes didn't understand that. Their loss. Izuku walks into the one at prep room with Momo behind him. Everyone good to go? Mike will be starting the festival soon. I hope everyone is happy with their preparations. Izuku began only to be ignored, wish I coulda worn my costume. Ashido talks at a table surrounded by classmates, they're not allowed, in the interest of fairness. 
Ojiro sits back in his chair, whatever. Izuku checks his stat sheets and his equipment. Izuku made sure to add equipment that was more for agility and movement for the first event, he would have to change it between games, depending on the situation. The blue hue disappears once he equips what he wants, Midoriya. The typical cold Todoroki speaks from the left side of the room, yes, Todoroki? What is it? Midoriya turns his head as he closes the screens, objectively speaking. The two-tone-haired student stands in front of him. I'm stronger than you. Izuku's irritation spikes some, the last guy to think that lost his head. Izuku smirks. Sure, you are, the teachers have their eyes on you, whatever happened inside the USJ. They didn't want anyone to know. Todoroki leans forwards, All Might's got his eye on you, doesn't he? Izuku lost his smile at those words, I will beat you, ooh. A declaration of war from the strongest in the class? Kaminari ever the dunce speaks up, hey, man, why pick a fight now? Kirishima tries to pull Todoroki back as the two men were in each other's faces, ready to go right there in the prep room. We're about to go on, I really don't care. I'm not pretending to be anyone's friend, here. Todoroki shrugs off Kirishima's hand, Aizawa was already on my ass for slacking off during the quirk test day one. There is a truth to that in a way. No one in UA has yet to push me to go all out, so how about you stop playing the cold little boy and warm up some? Izuku's shoulder checks Todoroki, you won't beat anyone with half your power, and if we match up, I will kick your ass until you break whatever is holding you back. Izuku throws the door open, let's go, Izuku growls as he heard Mike yelling while getting the crowd hyped up, the first year stage. The students are coming out. Mike yells as Izuku leads his class. He grits his teeth. I'm going to beat Todoroki into a bloody pulp. I'm tired of his cold shoulder, plus I'm pretty tired of icy bastards. It's UA's sports festival. The one time each year when our fledgling heroes compete in a ruthless grand battle. Mike continues to hype the crowd. First up, you know who I'm talking about. The first years of the hero course. Class A. The crowd cheers. The stadium was filled with civilians, heroes, and much to Izuku's distaste. Media, wow, what a crowd. Siro smiles as other classes were introduced somewhat quickly but still given their due, Izuku keeps his eyes forward as he saw Midnight standing on a stage. Seriously? Fan service? Mizu, seriously? Now for the athlete's oath. The sound of Midnight's whip cracking makes the attention turn to her. Ooh. The first year's ref this time is Midnight. A pro hero smiles while elbowing his friend, what about the principal? His friend asks while moving away from the elbow, he's always assigned to the third year stage. He continues. But, it seems they wanted to watch. The hero points up to a booth. The winners of last year are watching, Nijire, Mirio, and Tamaki were in a booth usually saved for the upperclassmen. It is never filled during the first year's sports festival since they are getting ready for their own festival, why are we here again? Tamaki was hiding behind the two in front of him, Nijire wanted to watch Midoriya. Mirio smiles, seeing the younger students getting ready. Plus, we get to see what our first years got since Aizawa expelled the last class A, Nijire. Tamaki whines, but Nijire was mumbling while watching the green-haired student. W.I because his quirk is interesting, Nijire speaks while watching. Trust me, this sports festival will be entertaining to watch. She smiles as usual, what is his quirk, anyways? Mirio watches as Midnight told everyone to shut up, I don't know yet. Nijire pouts, your student representative is. Midnight pauses for dramatic effect. From class 1A Izuku Madroya, Izuku let out a long sigh, why did no one tell me? Aizawa watches as Midoriya walks towards the stage. I knew I forgot to tell him something. Yamada turns to him with a deadpan expression, must be because he placed first in the entrance exam. Siro tries to stay quiet, but other classes overheard that, the hero course entrance exam. A snotty girl from class C states. Izuku's vein bulges as he looks at Momo, who is looking away from him, the athlete's oath. 
Izuku stands in front of hundreds of people, he feels his stomach twist with nerves but steals himself. He looks towards the announcement booth knowing his teacher was up there. Thank you, sensei, for telling me I needed to give a speech, Izuku states with heavy sarcasm. Whatever, please don't make this year boring. I look forward to seeing everyone in action, Katsuki and his classmates tense up. They knew what that meant. Midoriya's calculating eyes skin the students in front of him. He only enjoys the sports festival to see quirks in action, give it your all or just leave. You're wasting people's time if you're going to half-ass this festival. Good luck, Izuku walks off the stage back to his class, making sure to give Todoroki a pointed look. Todoroki was glaring at him, the rest of the students couldn't figure why he said good luck. Why did he say good luck? He seemed bored already. Class A and their arrogance. A blonde snarks. Izuku rolls his eyes. I need to finish this quickly if I want to see others in action. Now, without any delay. Let's get the first event started. Midnight brought the attention back. Everything at UA's always without delay. Ochako was next to Izuku, who was looking towards the large entrance. It's going to be a race, Izuku speaks under his breath. These are the qualifiers. Midnight and most of the stadium turns to the large screen. It's at this stage that so many are sent home crying every year, and the fateful first event this year is. The screen stops spinning, showing three names in a line. Obstacle course race, Izuku smirks, seeing he was correct. Too easy to guess this stuff. It's a race between every member of all eleven classes. Midnight begins to explain the race as the classes lines up to the large gate. Izuku has seen many entrances to dangerous places, the walls always seem to close in before opening to the boss doors. Izuku could see the walls start to get closer deeper into the hall. Few students got into a stance. Izuku bounces on the balls of his feet, ready to sprint through this. Racers, to your position. Class A was towards the front as everyone got ready to run. The teachers were placing bets on who would win, and the times it would take from their booth. Start. Skill. Sprint has activated. Everyone in the stadium caught a blur of green and blue move faster than most speed quirks disappear down the hall. Everyone chases after it, but the walls close in. Todoroki freezes anyone near him before running through the gate, leaving the ice in his wake. Youch! I'm frozen. A few students yell, so cold, that bastard, Aizawa. Are you ready for our live coverage and commentary? Yamada questions his tired friend, not voluntarily. Aizawa lost Midoriya like everyone else, but he saw the destruction he left on the cameras in each section. He's gotten faster, too easy, Todoroki. Class A was already rushing forward, able to dodge Todoroki's first attack. I ain't letting you get ahead that easy, half and half. Katsuki blasts forward as Momo vaults over students. Ashido uses her acid, and Ojiro uses his tail. A Class C student was being carried out of the tunnel by other students. Todoroki hears Mineta get slapped away by a robot as they made it towards the first obstacle. There was a problem. Robo, um. Mick's voice dies over the speakers as the overview of the massive army of zero pointers was missing a line. Knocked over like dominoes, each missing their heads. What happened to those zero pointers? Mike questions the man next to him. Aizawa, on the other hand, was watching the recording of the area. Midoriya Izuku happened. He pushes the replay of Midoriya's blur shoot past the line of zero pointers, and then the zero pointers falling backward, each missing their heads towards Mike. That kid is scary, Mike mutters before turning back to the other racers because the cameras couldn't find Midoriya. The rest of the zero pointers move towards the racers. Todoroki and others didn't catch the already headless bodies of the zero pointers as he freezes one that reaches for him. Kirishima and his silver steel twin got trapped under it while chasing Todoroki. Katsuki flies above the zero pointers as he finally learned how to use them to prolong his flight. He operates as high as he could, watching green hair walking into a tunnel. He already won. Katsuki huffs before dive bombing back to the floor to at least get second place. Momo creates a cannon to destroy the rest of the zero pointers and helping others get to the next stage, which was a pit with ropes connecting platforms. The standout of the event was a support student that used her. Babies. To get through the obstacle quicker than some of the hero course students, 
Bakugo and Todoroki were fighting each other while making their way to the last barrier. Ida T poses on the lines using his engines to propel himself forwards, a smart move. Even if Mike called it unsightly, in the stadium, the crowd talks about the students' maneuvers and the leaders. The kid in the lead just can't be stopped. His quirk's awesome, but it's not just that. He's also incredibly athletic and perceptive. You got that, right? You know the flame hero, Endeavor? That's his son. A few members of the crowd keep talking while the third year and keener eyes notice they general public were wrong. Todoroki isn't in first place. Nijire speaks softly while leaning against the railing watching the screens. Yeah, I saw it too. Mirio nods along. He's quick and powerful. Did you not see the line of dead zero pointers? It was like the entrance exam again. I wonder when others will notice. Tamaki stretches some. In the teacher's box, Niza plays with his tablet that was connected to every part of the school. The other teachers were just watching the action, commenting on what their students needed to work on. Class B was sticking together, which Vlad was happy about, but they were not genuinely showing off their strength. He remembered that they wanted to make it a strategy to hide their quirks till the second round. Vlad King said it was up to them, and they followed through. One question was on his mind, though. Where is Midoriya? He asks. He hasn't seen the green-haired kid since his speech. I was wondering that as well, Yagi states as the cameras switch between different students getting past the second obstacle. A few students with green hair, none of them was the boy they were looking for. Oh, you haven't noticed? Nizo asks while looking up from his tablet. Noticed what? Snipe questions while looking at his boss. Midoriya finished the obstacles. He just is not taking first place yet. He's waiting for someone. Nizu shows them the camera in the tunnel. Midoriya was standing right near the end, watching the TV and writing in his notebook. What the? The teachers grab the tablet. When did he get there? He's been there, Nijair states while floating with her head over the wall. By the time Todoroki got to the second one, he walked into the tunnel. Good I hate Onizu smiles. I am surprised to see one of the third years watching. Nisa knew if one third year was here, the other two were as well, and just to prove his point, Mirio's head pops through the wall. I'm here too, principal, and so is Tamaki. Mirio's energy alongside Nijires was also infectious to the people around them. So, what are your thoughts on your youngers? Nisu smiles while turning back to the tablet. They are strong and clever. Mirio grins. A lot smarter than we were when we started. You guys have grown a lot since your first years. I know Aizawa is proud of all three of you. Nisa speaks loudly so Amajiki could hear. Thank you. The three call out, one much softer than two. So, Hado, where did you and Midoriya disappear off to when you were both off campus? Nisa was curious like always. Oh, well, he created this portal with this ice key. Then when we went through it, it was like a winter wonderland. It was cold, and I still have the coat he gave me. Oh. Also, we got attacked by evil elves, Nijire explains quickly as teachers perk up at that. What? The teachers yell. Don't worry, Midoriya took care of them. Apparently, they are a part of his quirk. He took down a bear in a single punch. It was so cool and interesting. Oh, have you seen his shadows? Nijire was sitting on the dividing wall as Mirio was staring at her like the teachers. You mean the big guy he used during the entrance exam? Thirteen asks. She wasn't inside the USJ, and it was kept need to know. Oh, I'm talking about his army. Nijire drops the bomb on everyone in earshot. If just one of them could destroy a zero pointer and kill whatever the Noma was, an army of them would be devastating. It was awesome, but he has this big guy that's really goofy and sweet. Nijire was about to continue when Mick's voice booms through the speakers. The one who made it back to the stadium first is. The stadium watches as Izuku Midoriya strolls out of the tunnel while writing in his notebook. He had a massive grin on his face as Todoroki and Bakugo both glaring at his back. Izuku Midoriya. Where did he come from? He was already in the tunnel before the students got to the second obstacle, Aizawa explains as most of the crowd was confused since they thought Todoroki was first the entire time or so they thought. Watch the screens, and we will replay his four-minute run-through. The crowd watches the blur move through each obstacle with ease. 
the students all suddenly understood the words Midoriya spoke, good luck, and that concludes what if Deku had solo leveling system part 3. We hope you enjoyed the thrilling ride as we follow Deku and class 1A in their battle training, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Stay tuned for our next video, where we explore more of the exciting world of anime.